Please note that this content is for adults only. Viewer discretion advised. If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe, like and share. Hello everyone and welcome back to another live stream with me, Gizzela K. We are back in court and today, even though it's a bit hot, I've got my blazer on, <laughs> ready for court. Thank you so much to everyone who's here already. Sorry for the slight little two minute delay there. It literally was fury. You can't just blame the cat, but it was literally fury. He's around here somewhere. He's being very demanding. <laughs> he doesn't want me to be in court all day again. Okay, so we are on day two, morning session of the Ronald Anthony Burgos Aviles trial. Now he's 33 years old right now. He was 28 years old at the time when the crime was committed. And he is charged with the murders of his mistress Griselda Hernandez and their son, Dominic Hernandez, who was only 18 months old. And this happened in Laredo, Texas on April 9th, 2018. And it's taken a while to get to trial, as you can see. There was the pandemic in between as well, which means there were huge delays there too. Uh, let me just set this up quickly for you guys. So, yes, what we found out yesterday from her sister, who was the first witness to testify, was that uh, Griselda met him online in 2015 and then they started seeing each other. I'm not sure if she was aware if he was married or not, but he was married with two kids, two little boys, and this was not his first affair. And I say that because I saw, when I looked into his background, but is, are there any other incidents? Does he have a criminal history? Because, I mean, the savagery here, is, it's so savage what he did. He stabbed Griselda 27 times, but so badly. And twice his son, but... Again, those details were very hard to listen to yesterday. I really feel for the family. So, by the way, if you're sharing the White Hearts, thank you so much like this. We're sharing that to show the family lots of love and support. Sorry, let me put that up there. Um, we're showing them love and support by sharing the white ribbons because they shared, um, they were wearing white ribbons at the candlelight vigils. And the Baby Yoda is for little Dominique who was wearing a Baby Yoda shirt the day that he was murdered. But yes, they started seeing each other and Griselda got pregnant and Ronaldo, who told her his name is Anthony Burgos, but he's uh, Ronald, sorry, Anthony Burgos Aviles is his full name. Uh, he didn't want anything to do with that child, especially not to pay a cent. So she raised him. Uh, she had another son called Jaden. I'm not sure where that dad is or if he was paying support or who he is. And yes, I'm just recapping now. Court's supposed to start, they said, at... 8.45 Texas time, so in the next 8 minutes, yeah, probably in the next 8 minutes, Van says, blazer it up despite the heat. That's right, that's dedication for you guys. <laughs> so, she had another son, he was 6 years old at the time, I mean, this was 5 years ago, so, yeah, shame. I wonder, you know, what he remembers, and I'm sure he remembers his mother well, he was 6 years old. It's so scary to think that um, Dominic would have been... Like seven now. Wow. So if you missed it, uh, let me just quickly see if this is the right picture. Hold on, this one. This one. This is the, these are the victims. Shame. 28-year-old Griselda Hernandez and 18-month-old um, Dominic Hernandez. So, yes. <laughs> Alpha She Wolf says eight minutes to get coffee. This is the situation I'm in today. We've already got trial bubble going on here. <laughs> it's been one day. It's trial bubble because it's trial and Coburger and everything. Everything. So many cases happening right now. So thank you to all of you who bought coffees. I bought this instead. It's watermelon Red Bull. And don't give me any health speeches, okay? I just need it. <laughs> don't judge me. So I have the court stream. I'm watching. I'm monitoring to see, you know, when does it start. Uh, from what we learned yesterday, they're a little bit late here and there. Okay. And so, we're waiting for day two. We, le we learned a lot yesterday. Yes, especially from um, Angelica Hernandez. 
Griselda's sister, and it was so heartbreaking to watch her testimony. I mean, it was just difficult, you could see, you know, to relive everything and just think about her gut instinct. Angelica was like, mm, I don't know if you should meet up with this guy. I'm not so sure. Why do you want to meet up with him? Why does he want to meet up with you? Why now? Right? And yeah, sadly, she was right. I mean, this guy was up to no good, but he did the classic, you know, the love bombing type thing, the deflection. Just come on, I, I want to spend some time with my son. And he actually met his son for the first time on March 25th of 2018. So just uh, two weeks before he, w he murdered them, allegedly. He's accused of murdering them. He is facing the death penalty, if I didn't mention that yet. Um, and so when he met him for the first time, his son, Griselda literally, they met up at a park, Winfield Park. And Griselda's like, okay, I'm going to go into the car to go get his sippy cup and some snacks. And then what happened? Well, he was holding Dominique. Like in a loving way, like holding him, you know what I mean? And talking to him and saying, you know, and audibly, as in Griselda walking away could um, hear this. So I don't know if she sent her sister a text message. I think that's how we know that. Yes, yes, that's how. Because that was on March 25th. And she told her sister the story. So he was saying... You know, you're not going to end up like me. My grandmother raised me. Don't worry. You're going to have a dad in your life. I'm never going to leave you and all of that. And while he was doing that, he allegedly injected little Dominic with we don't know what yet. I know it's driving us all nuts. We don't know what was in that syringe. It was an 18 gauge needle and it made a puncture wound. And then it caused necr necrosis. So his tissue died in that area. And his blood was all blackened and he was in pain and inflamed and couldn't walk. So, and before that, he said, you're not going to want to be my friend in a few weeks. In a message, I think it was a Facebook message to Griselda. You're not going to want to be my friend in a few weeks from now. Wow. So, even that. And of course, the defense <laughs> would try to give them the benefit of the doubt. It's a little bit difficult in this case. <laughs> not a great defense team. Eduardo Pena. Shame. He's just going for, but the doctor thought it was an insect bite. The sister thought it was an insect bite, right? So they're trying to reduce <laughs> the possibility in the jury's mind of this being premeditated, but it sounded very much premeditated. Well, let me quickly get to some of your comments. Welcome to all my uh, moderators. Thank you so much to all the moderators who are here and who are always here. I really appreciate everything you do. If you guys want to show them support, you can go to my website. There's a support page and you can find out how to buy them some coffees. And thank you so much. Also, welcome to all my patrons. Hope you got the notification yesterday. I updated you twice, right? And the second one had all sorts of links and stories and all kinds of things and including this one. So I hope you got that notification. And also, welcome to all my members. And then all the new subscribers, all the old subscribers, and it doesn't mean you all, okay? I mean, oh, gee, like original Grizzlies. <laughs> Welcome to you as well. I think we might hit a new milestone today in this community. This community is ever growing, which I'm so excited about. The more we have of us, the more Grizzlies, the more proactive, determined, kind, respectful people we are all together. The more impact we can have, the more we can show families lots of love and support. So... Jean says, good morning, Grizzlies. So good morning, everyone. AB says, can someone ask about what substance you use? We're all asking. We all want to know. Um, we've speculated, you know, and there's lots of registered nurses and doctors in the chat as well. I've got emails as well. And everybody's saying either it was like a dirty needle. So it could be anything like waste or it could be steroids. It could be acid. It could be anything he could have access to from Border Patrol. So if you didn't know, he was a Border Patrol agent, actually a supervisory officer in charge of five other Border Patrol agents. Uh, so let's see the time. In two minutes, they should start. Otherwise, I would do some map time. <laughs> We've done some map time before, but he basically lured Griselda to this uh, park, the Father Macnabo Park, Father Charles Macnabo Park in Laredo, Texas and said, meet me there. I want to first check on my son before you take him to the hospital because his leg was not doing well after being injected, right? And so she parked the car there. She used her sister's car. And he said, but don't meet me there. I'm not going to meet you there. Meet me at a secret spot. So as always, we do not uh, victim blame. 
victim shame on this channel. But what we do is try to learn. So if Griselda had a gut instinct, which she seems to have from the text messages we saw between her sister, like, I don't know, maybe I should meet up with him. I mean, I want him to pay child support. He says he wants to get to know his son. You got to look at the whole history of behavior of that person who blocked her on social media when she just asked for child support already, you know, and then suddenly unblocked her and is like, hey, yeah, I want to meet up with you. Let's, let's go because she filed um, a child support claim with the Texas courts. Uh, Kathleen says, Dr. Patrice Berry, psychologist, responds, welcome. Thank you for joining. Yes, sorry, I missed your message, but welcome. Nice to nice to see all, all, all the people in the chat, especially all the professionals as well. Lots of professionals here. Thank you so much for being here and lots of locals as well. From Laredo, Texas, or from Texas in general, thank you so much for being here too. And welcome to all the family and friends of the victims in this case. And I must say of the defendant as well, I guess, because, I mean, this would also be really hard for them. Except his mother's in denial, I must say. The defendant's mother's in denial. Annie P sent me an article yesterday which says that she believes her son is innocent. So there's that. Uh, 99 pink balloons. Thank you for being a member for two months. So anyway, I'm watching the court. Don't worry. We're going to boost it as well. Because have you <laughs> have you tried to watch the, the replay? The only cameras that have access to this trial would be the Court TV and Law and Crime Network cameras. It's actually Court TV. They've got the camera rights. They're the media. They are there physically. And Law and Crime Network and Court TV. Law and Crime Network streams it. Court TV shows segments of it. But man, the sound, huh? We gotta, we gotta boost it. So we're gonna, we're gonna be boosting, okay? Sure. And yesterday, some parts. Imagine, imagine Eduardo with no boost. Wow. Pivotal says I'm professional, retired. Okay. Sorry, I don't know why the chat's not popping up now. Pop up, chat. Sometimes it's giving me issues. For again. Yeah, Patricia, you can ask the mods that. <laughs> the mods decide when we slow chat or not. We've got some mod managers in the house, and they will decide. There's reasons why we do and why we don't at certain times slow it down. Oh my word. Okay, so Bice says her son has been in court. He's 12. Wow, okay. So let me take this picture off here. Do you want me to continue on with the recap story? Because I can. I just really want to get the border and everything ready. Yes. I've got that. Got that. And let's move me over here. We're waiting. We're waiting. There we go. Ah, there the chat popped up for a second. Uh, Christine Wilcox says, this guy's hard to look at with his narcissistic face. So let me, have you guys, do you remember what he looks like? Let's find, let's find him. Let's find a picture of him, shall we? Again, you'll be like, no, we don't want to see him. Yeah, you, you're going to see him now. Let's bring him over here. This is him. Ronald Anthony Burgos Aviles. So, let's see the time. Yep, they're two minutes late for today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we are waiting. Nation Simmons, thank you for being a member for two months. Let me move the chat over so it's not over my face like this. There we go. Stormy says, why do these lawyers get to sit while questioning the witnesses? Wait, and why does the defense get to question again after the redirect? I don't know. <laughs> Any lawyers, do you know? I mean, I know it works differently everywhere, but I get what you're saying. I'd be like, why are they always late? <laughs> That's my number one question. Why are they always late? You said 8.45. <laughs> the judge said he doesn't want to start at 9. He wants to start at 8.45 today. So we are waiting. Yes. Anyway, so shall, shall I continue on with the story that I was? You lured it to the park, the Father McNabber Park. And said, meet me in a secret spot, which is like in nature, in the bushes. So she parked the car and then walked along the walking trails to her death. He was hiding in the bushes. How do we know that? They say cell phone data. Hiding in the bushes. Jumped out with a knife. They've never found the murder weapon though. But they say the sharp force injuries indicate a knife, right? Jumped out of the bushes. And stabbed her 27 times. They said it was a cluster of injuries on her neck. It was so bad and she was lying face down when she was found. And then he unbuckled he unbuckled the baby from the stroller, carried the baby to another location not too far away. The bodies were found fifteen feet apart. Lifted his shirt, 
I did put a trigger warning in the beginning, okay? This content is for educational purposes and for adults only. Lifted his shirt, the little baby Yoda shirt, stabbed him in the chest. They said he was a fighter too, that little baby, oh my word. And then in the neck. Oh, man. And I re-listened to the opening statements again today. And they said his plan was probably to make it look like she was ambushed by smugglers. This guy. But he radioed in. Remember, he went home to shower and change. He was seen on a neighbor's camera while on duty, clocking in at 6 a.m. And this murder occurred between 9.55 and 10 a.m. That's the narrow timeline. Yesterday they actually said 9.46 to 10.10. So it's between there. The murders occurred. He got in his vehicle, went home, and was seen on a neighbor's camera in shorts and tennies. So like tackies. In South Africa we call, uh, you know, like running shoes, tennis shoes, those types of shoes. We call them tackies. Did you guys know that? <laughs> Learning South African words over here. I am South African. Living in the Netherlands. So yes. Um... And so he went home, changed, got back in his uniform, arrives on scene. And he's like, what's over there? Is there an exit? And he goes there. Other uh, Border Patrol agents are there. And they're like, he's acting a little shady. They drive away. And then he suddenly radios in, send an ambulance. And they're like, what for? And he's like, just send an ambulance. Ambulance arrives. He's standing right there by Griselda's body. And the best part of all of this was that because of the vehicle... Griselda borrowed her sister's vehicle. So they tracked the registration and her sister did not live far away at all. A few blocks away, she said. They tracked the vehicle. She, they went to her house and they're like, what, where, what happened? We found this abandoned car. And they obviously knew that he's standing with a body like, do you know what happened? She's like, my sister was going to meet Anthony Burgos. And they're like, sorry, what? She's like, yes, a border patrol agent, Anthony Burgos. And some of this was heard on the radio. <laughs> and they were like, sorry, what? And he's standing at the scene and on the radio, they're saying, but that's the guy who found the body. I say body because they only found the baby's body a little later, right? So, he was like, no, my name's Ronald. <laughs> like, do you know another Burgos? There's a Border Patrol agent that's here? That was meeting this lady? You see? Yes. Christine Wilcox says, I can't believe someone could have so much anger. Okay. The Ronaldo says, your heading uses the word um, mistress that implies something indig indigent. Uh, consider using mother to child. I agree. I just, the, the reason I, I will change it. I will change it. I take your advice. I'm not loving it either. But that's, you know, that's, man. Social media is cate categorizing it as the, the mistress and child murder trial. And I'm like, oh, man. Okay, so hold on. I will change it. Just stand by. Wait title is it on my thumbnail where is it oh yeah okay it's on my thumbnail no problem murder of mother and child okay okay i like it i like we like good advice <laughs> so we'll, we'll do that okay thank you so much so how old are the other children Jaden, her other son was six at the time so he's 12 now is what someone said in court. 11 just turned 12, I suppose. And yes. And his other children, I don't know. I don't know. And let me just quickly change this one. Thank you. The Ronaldo. Morning. There we go. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm just quickly going to update that uh, thumbnail and I'll be right back, okay?
court still hasn't started yet. I mean, they're probably going to start at 9, aren't they? <laughs> so thank you to the Ronaldo. I mean, yeah. Sometimes it takes one to bend the arm. I'm like, I'm not loving this mistress word either. She wasn't even his mistress at the time. You know, she'd met him in 2015 online and he sounds like he was such a liar. So I don't even know if she knew that, that she was a mistress. You know what I mean? So thank you so much. Yes. Okay. So it's change on my thumbnail. The title. You see, this still says obvious mistress. We could change that too. We're all good, everyone. <laughs> we will do it. Um, thank you all for for being here. We are waiting for court to start. As soon as it does, I'll put it on. Okay. I am not T Pain, says thank you, Gizla, for changing it. Absolutely. Um Murders of his I'm just gonna say murders of. There we go. How about that? So don't worry, we'll change it in a moment. Okay. So let's see what you guys are saying. Yeah, Emily says apparently. Anthony and Griselda did not have a long affair. As soon as she got pregnant, he didn't want a relationship. Exactly. He clearly didn't want to see his child for 18 months. There was no relationship. Exactly. Exactly that. Okay. So, here we go. How's that? It's changed up there as well. Yes, this is it. Yeah. <laughs> Woman catfished by Psycho. Mm -hmm. And he's an online predator. A lot of coercive controllers, DV abusers, and uh, yeah, predators hang out online. So be careful online, okay? Because they're fishing in the same pool. Yes. <laughs> Humphy says, patience is what you need as a grizzly. And this case is testing our patience <laughs> for the trial days. Yes. So the red letter says, I agree to change it. I hate to think that she will always be remembered that way, regardless of her relationship with him. Same. Very nice. Suzanne says, can we work on the phrase presumed innocent? Due process is what they are entitled to. I like that. I like that. Due process. Yes. Um, so t Tony says, oh, I wonder what triggered him to do this child support. Apparently, yes. That's allegedly his motive. He didn't want to pay child support. He wanted to make... In his mind, I'm not saying it was a problem. In his mind, the problem, go away, right? Oh, my word. So ridiculous. So, yes. Um, no, I think that would be... F I don't think it said for years. It said had unprotected sex until got pregnant. I'm not sure if it was for years. Did it say for years? I stand corrected. But I think she was making a case. Like, can you help me? I know that he's the father. Um, because... Her sister testified that they met in 2015. Yes. <laughs> Joe Ellie says, what's bad about mistress? Just curious. Is a girlfriend better? Well, she wasn't his mistress at the time of the murders. That's why. And we don't want the title of mistress, you know, to be stuck on her. She's the victim. You know what I mean? So I get it. I get it. I get why the examples there. I like it. So thank you so much. Okay. So we are just waiting. It should be two minutes now. It should, it's actually quite late, but it should, should be about two minutes now to go. <laughs> yes, indeed. Okay. Just hold on one second. Oh, thank you. Heather says, Burgos Aviles was married with two children ages 10 and 3. Oh, okay. 10 and 3. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Let's write that down. So they were 10 and 3 at the time of the murder. They were 10 and 3. So they would now be sure 15 and 8 or so. Wow, it's been a while. Thank you so much to everyone who's sharing information. Really appreciate it. Sweetie Pie says he must have despised her and the baby so much to be so vicious. I wonder, or is he just that psychopathic cold? Is this how he solves problems? Which does make us think, well, damn, what's in your past? How did you treat your wife? Right? I think it's only normal to think that. I'm like, wait, what? Because <laughs> this was so savage. Wow. Uh, Paula said, do we know anything about his wife? 
We don't, but yesterday someone in chat said that she is standing by his side. So I'm not sure if she's in court or not, but apparently, apparently they're still married. Somebody's mathing. Kathy says, so his wife was pregnant when they started seeing each other in 2015? Interesting. Maybe. Well, I have to work that out exactly. Yes. If so, now I'm basing this all on what you guys are saying. I don't know any of this to be fact. It's just locals that are here, family, and people that know, sharing some things here in the chat. So we're just looking at that. Oh, my word. <laughs> this really is the hurry up and wait to trial. Hmm. So I'm going to go back to waiting for court. Let's wait for court. I'll be right back, okay? Because I don't know what else to waffle about right now. I'm watching your chat and I just want to create something else for the background and then I'll, I'll see you in a moment as soon as it starts, okay? Welcome back everyone and today we are going to be looking at day two we're watching day two of the trial of Ronald Anthony Burgos Aviles who is facing the death penalty for the murders of Griselda Hernandez 27 and their baby Dominic Hernandez this happened on April 9th 2018 and so let's get this going they haven't there's no sound yet, no one in court yet, but uh, that we can see. But as soon as it's on, we'll be here together watching it. Thank you for joining me. If you could take a moment to please like and share this video and let others know that we are live for day two of the trial. It really helps, especially on Twitter. We'd really appreciate it. And as soon as the sound is on, I'll boost it as well so we get the best sound possible. Jansky, thank you so much for the £10 super sticker from earlier as well. Airy Fairy says, hey Ron, I haven't been able to join our live. Been able to, okay, okay, with work. Wanted to pop on and say hello. Hello. Thank you so much, Airy Fairy. All right. 
So let's see what happens today. I'm not too sure who all the witnesses will be today. But we are ready. We are ready. Gerda, I believe this question came up yesterday. There was some mixed answers from legal experts in the chat. I believe that he can any time up until the verdict. I believe that was the consensus. There we go. Jansky, found your sticker. Thank you so much. He said, thank you, G, for being such an amazing, caring person, the best true crime investigator. Thank you so much. That's so sweet. Today, the channel is two months, uh, two years and one month old. Uh, Two years and one day old. <laughs> Thank you so much to everyone who sent all the lovely wishes yesterday. Kamala Norris, uh, welcome to membership. Okay. So, the hashtag, you can use the hashtag. I'm currently using Ronald Burgos Aviles Trial, Grizzly True Crime, and Laredo, Texas. So that could be good. Uh, the hashtags um, are also in my description box if you need some ideas for what hashtags to use. That would be great. Thank you so much. Any pieces, they accomplished so much yesterday. They really did. Yesterday was the opening statements, if you missed it. I have created a playlist for you on this case. It's always linked in the description box. And the timestamps are also always done for you, so you can easily navigate through the entire live stream we did for the morning session or the afternoon and just skip to the parts that you might want to see again without having to sit through four hours trying to find that moment, right? Let me clear my throat. Sorry about that. I've still got a slight cold, but I'm much, I'm much better today. So the thing is, if you're wondering, <laughs> I don't like saying it, but in case people wonder, otherwise you're like, oh, you're okay. I'm fine. I'm good. So yes, I made a playlist for you. It's always linked in the description box. Timestamps are there for you. I'll do it for this every day as well. So go check it out if you missed out on any of that because yesterday was powerful. A powerful opening statements, powerful testimony from Griselda's uh, sister Angelica, and the medical examiner was there. And then the defense decided to go with a, a low blow move of trying to impeach the witness, the medical examiner. That was quite something, huh? Yes, uh, for those of you asking, yes, there is a Brian Koberger hearing today. I hope that you looked at my video. I hope you watched it. I made one yesterday. If you were in the stream, we looked at the, the document together. But if you missed it, please go check out in my video section. There's two Koberger videos from yesterday that I would recommend checking out before the hearing today, because then you'll be right up to speed of what they're actually going to be arguing about. Tony Elias says, good morning, G. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for covering this case. Congratulations on your two years. You're absolutely the best. Thank you so much, Tony. And it's our two years. The community turned two yesterday. Yes. And Mama of Three says, I hope there are more witnesses like the medical examiner. She was amazing. Yes, she was. And Tiff, you're not wrong. <laughs> it's actually my number one. I can't even call it a pet peeve. I think it's a little bit more intense than a pet peeve. <laughs> is people not being punctual like oh man <laughs> really don't like that but anyway i've learned a lot of patience <laughs> over the years of being married mr grizzly swiss and they're known to, for being punctual but he's he's not such a punctual dude so i've learned a lot of patience we are patiently waiting for this court day to start uh, regina says how did the impeachment go it didn't <laughs> the judge was just like nope she's going to continue with her testimony Eduardo Pena, the defense attorney, he was just going for it. Even when the jury came back in, he's like, so, about that other case many years ago, remember that one where you said, and I'm like, oh man. So it didn't, it didn't go well, it didn't go well. <laughs> they didn't get, uh, I mean, it didn't go well for the defense. <laughs> it went well for the prosecution side because they did, the witness was not impeached and she was very, very good. Sausage Toast says, no one caught smoking in the stairwell. And as we say every day, what do we say from yesterday? When this happens, when they're so late, huh? Well, we hope that he's changed his mind. He's going to plead guilty and just stop putting the family through this, right? Heidi says, I like punctuality too. Yes. Sarah Jane, welcome to membership. Thank you so much and welcome to all the new members. Um, your name will be highlighted and you can use those emojis that I make for you. And we are using the white ribbons to show support for the family, as well as the baby Yoda to show, you know, just love and support for Griselda and Dominique. Because Dominique was wearing a baby Yoda shirt on the day he was murdered. 18 months old. 
<laughs> Yorkie says, I believe the judge said yesterday for the jury to be there. He actually said 8.15 because he wants to start at 8.45. That's what he said. He wants to start in 15 minutes increments. He was talking about that. So uh, we've been all ready since 8.45 Texas time to start, you know. But <laughs> I get your point, Yorkie. Maybe. Just never know. <laughs> Okay, so while we're here, let me look through my notes quickly, just to see if there's anything I missed telling you about. Sorry, you're going to hear pages now. You're going to hear pages flapping. Oh yeah, there was also a doctor that testified yesterday. Dr. Antonio Rodriguez. So there was Angelica Hernandez, Griselda's sister. And then Dr. Antonio Rodriguez. And he was talking about Dominique's leg and how he saw inflammation and redness. And he thought, well, maybe it's an insect bite. He wasn't too sure. He did some blood work as well. Everyone was asking about the blood work. Not toxicology, though. Um, and it showed some anemia. And so, yeah, he was just looking for what could be the problem. And many medical professionals in chat said that's what they would do. You wouldn't immediately think, oh, my word, like somebody injected him or something, right? Yes. Thank you for sharing the white ribbons and the baby Yoda. Thank you so much. Sherry, thanks for being a member for one month. Oh, that's true as well. That's a good point. Emily says, Emily53, they mentioned yesterday that interpreters would be needed. Maybe they're waiting for them to arrive. That's true as well. Yes. So we're definitely going to need the boost and we have to listen very carefully today to make sure exactly what's happening. <laughs> Aussie Mel says, so many new members today, welcome. We'll have a member stream again soon. At the moment, damn. I am <laughs> working many hours a day. Trial prep and trials and all the other cases, it's a lot, it's a lot. But we will have a, a members only stream again soon. We actually started off members only yesterday. So we were chatting there before the trial. A lot of waffle time. Waffle means babbling like we're doing now. Brody B, there's the judge. He says, uh, what was it with the doctor? He seemed very offish. Maybe he was a little defensive. Yeah, put the put the sound on court. Can you hear? Wait. The sound's coming on. They're not talking much yet. Move. You wanna, talking you, wanna softly. Take, you wanna withdraw them from admission and then bring them back in? Okay, which ones are they? They are talking very softly. Um, but as soon sure as your, your client is out, please. All right, Mr. Burgos is out in the courtroom. The, the request, uh, you have missed anything, Mr. Burgos? We just started, uh, the DA's state just uh, uh, requested to withdraw a State Exhibit 102, from admission State Exhibit 102, 101, 101 and 97 for the purposes of, of uh, we're planning to readmit them at some well, point after the witnesses have gone through that exhibit. Any objection from the defense? No objection, Your Honor. All right. They will be then withdrawn with uh, the intent to, at some point uh, during this trial, that the uh, exhibits will be re-offered. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I apologize again for the delay this morning, but uh, we had, a, as you all know, a technical glitch with our audiovisual system. We're up and running. We're good to go. Okay. Yes, sir. Technical glitch. All right. <laughs> yeah, nice boost. Same, same ruling. Same. Uh, if if they're not uh, uh, witnesses at the guilt innocent phase, the trial may be at punishment, or even if there were punishment, they'll be allowed to. Stay in the court. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's uh, bring the jury out. And your next witness has already been sworn in, yes? 
All right, thank you. Quite the boost, huh? Quite the boost. Let them know that we want to jury yes. Well, Welcome, Laurie, Come to, on, to, to membership. Okay, everyone, so like, share, so everyone can know. We're live now. It's happening. Day two. Morning session. Yes. <laughs> that would be pet peeve number two. The defense never uses the mic. <laughs> I know. And they don't speak very, very loudly either, huh? So, welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Welcome, mods, patrons, members, subscribers. And if you haven't yet subscribed, do it. Yes, the prosecutor, Mr. Alanis. Me too. Judge Joe Lopez. Defense is Eduardo Pena. Well, paper. There we go. Isidro Alanis, the district attorney. Defense, Eduardo Pena. Judge Joe Lopez. There we go. We can only see his head now. Okay, so that's the camera angle right now. Hi, Judge. <laughs> Please have a seat. Good morning, members of the jury. All right, we'll just start with your next witness, Mr. Lanis. State calls Adriana Flores. Okay. Adriana Flores, please, please. Sergeant Adriana Lawrence, please Flores. bring her up. Remind everyone about their cell phones. Please check them right now. I'm doing the same. Make sure they're on vibrate or off, please. Ms. Flores, good morning. Please come on up. Adriana. Thank you. Uh, good morning. You were sworn in already yesterday, is that correct? All right, please have a seat right over here. Uh-oh. Yeah, no, it's on, it's on, it's on. Correct. I'm sorry, I didn't see that. All right. So if you could sit up a little bit so that we can get you right good on the microphone, Ms. Lotus. Uh, you can pull the chair up a little bit. There you go. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to ask you to uh, scoot up and speak into the mic so that the court reporter can hear you. Thank you. Can you please state your name for the record? Adriana Flores. Adriana Flores, okay. Do you know why you're here today? Yes. Uh, why is it that you are here today? Um, because I was Griselda's best friend. Okay. I'm going to ask you to, to try to speak a little louder. Uh, you have a soft voice. Uh, what is it, your relationship with her is that as her best friend? Yeah. How did you know Griselda? Um, we went to school together. Okay, when you say school, uh, can you be more specific? Um, I met her in middle school and throughout high school. Okay. And were, what grades, uh, did you all share grades or in different grades? Can you please tell us? We were in the same grade. Um, yeah, we were in, in middle school together and in high school we were freshmen together. Okay. And when did you all become uh, best friends? Um, throughout high school, um, we were really close in, in freshman year. And then um, I, did, I didn't go to school. Um, I got out of school in my junior year, and then we reconnected um, in 2014. How did you reconnect in 2014? We had each other on social media, <laughs> and we just started messaging each other. Yes, Tracy, why did they ask, do you know why you're here today? That's right, NC. How did your relationship uh, evolve after that? Like, how did it grow? Um, we just started hanging out more, um, doing, like, the mom things, going out together. 
Now, when you say the mom things, how many children do you have? I have four. Okay. And uh, you reconnected with her in 2014. How many children did she have at that point? One. Okay. And eventually, uh, did she come to have another child? Yes. And who was that child? Dominic. Dominic Hernandez? Hernandez, yes. Dominic Alexander Hernandez. Dominic Alexander. And, and uh, sure. did you know Dominic? Yes. So in 2015, um, you start doing mom, uh, mom things with her? The bestie. Like, yes. Like what? We would just go out. Um, we would go out to eat, um, shop with the kids. Um, at that time, she only had her first son. So what's his name? Jaden. Okay. Um, did you have any children close to the age of? Dominic? Yes. Who is that? Uh, my two youngest ones. They were um, a few months apart from from each other. Like, yeah. Do you remember when uh, Griselda became pregnant with Dominic? Yes, in 2015. Well, let's let's talk about about that. How did you, did you how did you learn about her pregnancy? Um, she texted me. And she told me that um, she was pregnant. Did she? Did she? Did she tell you or discuss anything about the father of the baby? Um. Yeah. She. She told me that um, it was um, someone that she was dating, um, which was Anthony, and um, she just told me she was pregnant, and she just didn't. She didn't know what to do. Everyone knew him as Anthony. Have you ever met this Anthony? No. At the time that uh, the time that she said that she was pregnant from Anthony, did you know if she had been seeing this guy Anthony? I knew she had been seeing um, Anthony, yeah, but I never met him or anything like that. Uh, you mentioned that you would text. Uh, she said that what other platforms would you use to, what other types of social media would you use to speak with her? Um, we usually message through Facebook Messenger and Snapchat. Do you know if he said I had a job? No, she didn't. What was he said that doing in 2015, 2016? She was going to school to tell me you. Do you know what she was pursuing? Nursing. Do you know how she was able to to handle the the jobs of, of school and being so home? much, right? Um, what how was she doing it financially? Oh, she. Um, I do know that she was struggling a bit, and she was getting um like um student loans and helping herself out with that. Okay. And she would the student loans would help her with, with daycare. With daycare. Um, with the school, daycare, and anything she she needed at that time. Did you all did you all live uh, near each other? Yes. Uh, in what neighborhood per se, or what neighborhood can you tell the jury without the address? Um, we she lived on Dillwood, and I lived on a neighborhood over, which was like Rancho Viejo, around there. What do you call that part of the city? Off of what? It's Mines Road. Yeah. Okay. Um, I want to go back to April the 9th of, of uh, 2018. That's the day the crime happened. Remember that day? Yes. Did you remember coming in contact with Prisenda on that day? Yes. How, if any, did you come in contact with Prisenda? On April 9th? Yes. Um, she called me. To tell me to ask if she can use my restroom, and she went over to my house. Do you remember more or less what time this occurred during the day? It was like around nine in the morning. Right before nine, or right right before nine, um, or nine. Okay. And when she arrived uh, to your house, 
How did she get there? Um, she was in her sister's car. What type of car was that? It was a um, white Mercedes. Was anybody else in the car? Dominic. Okay. Her baby. Okay. And where was he? He was in the back seat, in the car seat. Do you remember what he was doing? Um, he was with his little phone. He was watching um, a little cartoon or something. On his own phone? Okay. How did you go out and, and greet Dominic? Yes. She went inside the house to use my restroom and I stayed outside with Dominic. And I stayed inside the car for a little bit. Did you have any discussions with her or offered to take care of Dominic? Um, I don't recall if I offered to take care of him. Um, but I did, um, I just stayed with him for a little bit and, and just waited till she came out. Do you know where she was going? Yes, she, yeah, to the park. Where, when you say the park, what park is that? Um, Father McNobie. Father McNobie or Father McNobie Park? Yeah, that one. Okay. Exactly. And that one, even I'm like, what? Do you remember seeing any food in the car? Yeah, I saw Chick-fil-A. Uh, so she was, any particular reason why she was going to Father McNamara Park? You know why she was going to yeah, she mentioned she was going to go to the park to meet Anthony. The father of the baby? Yes. Did you have any plans to see her later on that day? Yes. We had our original plans was, um, we had already discussed it a day before where she was going to come over around noon. We were going to watch a movie and hang out with the kids in my house. And after she came out of the restroom and walked out of your house to get into her, your car, did she ask you anything? About before she left my house? Yeah. She said, how do I look? And what did you say? He looked great. Call me back. I mean, call me when you're on your way. Shame. Did you see her again that day? No, I didn't. Let's go and talk about about this Anthony. Did she ever tell you what his last name was? Yes. What was his last name? Burgos. Anthony Zubos. What kind of information did, you, did she share with you about Anthony? Um, at the beginning, she just told me that he was a Border Patrol. That, that was at the beginning. What else did you come to learn about Anthony? Well, um, when we first talked about him, he was, she just mentioned that he was a Border Patrol and that um, he was separated, and that's that's pretty much what I knew about him. Did you know if he was she trusted him? Area? Yes. No. Um, from my understanding, um, he wasn't living in Laredo. Like he worked, but he he would just come sometimes. Like but he did live there. Else? Yeah, I believe so. So mm. I thought. Remember if we sell the uh, hold that buys them of a pregnancy? Yeah. Did, did, to your knowledge, did Ms. Anthony ever help her with the baby financially? No. How do you know that? Because um, she mentioned it to him and, and. Yes, Paula, yes. He didn't want anything to do with the baby. Like, she did, he didn't want her to go through, through the pregnancy. So he wasn't helping at all. When you say he didn't want her to go through the pregnancy, what do you mean by That's that? That's what they will say. He right? wanted her to um, abort the baby. And what was her decision? She didn't want to. She was going to keep the baby. So going into 2017, he said us having financial problems or struggles. In 2017, he said that with the baby, school, financially it's tough. Is that 
Yes. Um, you guys discuss options for what she should do? She did, um, well, we did talk about, um, her wanting to put, um, putting him on child support so she can help herself. What was your opinion about that? I told her that she should. Friday now. So, at that point in time, did you, did you, did she know before the decision? Ultimately, did she decide that yes, she's going to pursue child support? Yeah. Up until that time, did she know where Anthony lived? No. Did, did the, you or her both you try to? find out more about Anthony? Yes. So tell us, uh, were you, did you help her try to find stuff out about Anthony? We tried to do our investigation, I can say. We would like go through social media, Google, see a little bit more about him, just um, see what we can find out. Because you need like an address to be able to report for child support. So as her best friend, you're helping her now try to find this guy. Yes. Yes. So you you're using uh, social media, like what? Um, Instagram, Facebook, um, and Google search. Any success finding out information on him or his family? Um, she was able to find um, Instagram and um, the address on Google. Okay. Now that you, she had the address, uh, are we talking now 2017, close to 2018? Close to 2018. Around, around that whole child support time? Yeah, I don't recall the dates. That's fine. What if anything do y'all do? Um, well, we find out where he lives, and we did um, pass by his house oh, to wow. see if we can, like, if he actually did live here or he didn't. What? How many times were you? Uh, how, or, or let me ask you this: How, if any way, did you get to go to his house? What? Who was driving? I would drive. You would drive. Yeah. Um, I went like once or twice and I drove um, when I was with her. Do you remember the color of his house? I don't remember the color of his house. Do you remember more or less what part of town he lived in? Um, around Shiloh, Shiloh Crossing, I want to say, or Shiloh off Loop 20. So off, if you answer Shiloh off of Loop 20? Mm -hmm. Can you give me just a general direction how to get there? Um, so around where the Shiloh Crossing apartments are in that subdivision. You go in there? Yes. Um, I don't rem I can't, I don't recall how to, more or less, but yes, passing the, the, the apartments. Okay. So that's, that's one of the landmarks there, the, the apartments. Any yeah. other landmarks or buildings that you remember? I remember there was a park nearby, and that's that's it. I, I don't recall anything else. Were you ever able to find out? Were you ever able to find out if if he had a family? Yes, we. Tell us about that. So we eventually found out that he was indeed married. Interesting. Yes. Um, and that the wife actually lived in Dorado. Oh, why do you say she actually lived in a Because um, at the beginning, um, when she thought that they were separated or there was or she wasn't in the picture, there was some mention that she lived out of state. Where? Wow. In Florida, I want to say. Thank you, Loki. Were y'all able to discover? Uh, any information on, on his wife? Um, Social media on Anthony's wife? 
Just her name. Okay. And were you able to view any photos on her site? Yeah. Um, we saw some pictures of her children, of his kids. They must have got such a fright, man. They're like, he's married with kids. Do you, do you all Stia. remember? Or what did you do when you all saw these pictures of the, of the Well, um, at that point, it's when... Um, he was like always denying, like this is already like fast forward, he denied Dominic, so we just compared the pictures of his son to Dominic and it's, they were the same. They looked very alike. Shame, they you say they were the same. You found pictures of, of Anthony's kids? Yeah, there was a, we saw um, a picture of one of his, I don't know if it's his youngest or or which one, but there was a baby picture and it looked so much alike, like Dominic. Yeah, permission to approach her. Amen. I'm going to show you the state's exhibit 490, 495. Vicky says, I wonder if his ex-wife is going to testify. I wonder too. I ask you if you recognize these pictures yeah yes that's on 496 uh, 495 yes Let's see what function oh. sure I was gonna show them to you right now um, she's not I'm just asking if she's recognized as 494 yes okay and these are the images that you all saw on the Facebook yeah On Instagram, I'm sorry. Instagram. On Instagram. Look at him. Look at his face. Yeah, yeah. Maury says she's definitely getting him to react and kind of looked angry. Mm hmm. Yeah. The best he found out all about his life. <coughs> Any objection? Wardo. No objection. Be admitted without objection. Thank you. I'm first going to show you these uh, pictures. Shame. You recognize the new baby? Yes. That's Dominic. Shame, that's Dominic. Dominic? Well, Dominic, yes. You recognize these little shoes? Yes. Yes, I do. Let me ask you you saw Dominic on the last day he was alive. Was he walking? No. Oh, he was in the car seat. Okay, but was he, was he okay? No, I had seen him days prior he was not walking. <laughs> Thank you, Jamie. Shouting from the rooftops. She's not an ex-wife. She's his wife. So she and he, he and she have an immunity not to testify. Dominic. Oh no, Shane, look at little Dominic. So That's sweet. Dominic. Who's this little baby? So I think that's um, his other son. In other words, that's not Dominic. That's not Dominic. Well, they do look really alike. What number is on display now, sir? This is 495. Huh. So the, the, these little lips of kisses on Dominic. Who, who did that? Great. Griselda. And then it happens that Anthony's son on, the, on his wife's page she has kisses on, on his. Yes. It's a filter, yeah. And they look very similar. Yes.
Kelsey, I know, right? They look the same. I'm sorry, who's? Do you remember what name Anthony used on social media? Um, Roro Avi. Can you spell that for us? I think it's R O R O and then Avi is A V I. Roro Avi. Mm -hmm. What else did you come uh, to learn about the relationship that Griselda had with, uh, with Anthony? Well, like how often would they see each other? They would see each other just once in a while. It wasn't, um, I wouldn't say it was um, like a boyfriend-girlfriend relationship. It was more like they just dated some once in a while. Okay, okay. Bestie's going to spill the tea. Did you ever know how they would, how would they communicate? About him. Um, by social media. How she met All I know is that they met by social media. But you don't know what, which social media? Not what platform, no. Do you know what type of relationship Anthony had with Dominic? They had no relationship. In fact, did you ever learn about, about him wanting to give up his, his paternal rights? Yes. He texted Griselda that he wanted to give up his rights. Did you see that text? Or did she show you that text? Yes. Uh, and you said earlier that you would, you would uh, use social media or you would use Instagram to communicate with her? I would use um, Facebook Messenger and Snapchat to communicate with her. Lupe says he's big man. You can tell he hates his lies being exposed, right? Oh man, you make a point. May says, "Ooh, maybe that's why he covered Dominique's face." Ooh, scary thought. Scary thought. Yes. Weaver says, I'm really surprised he's still alive after five years in prison. Maybe they kept him segregated, right? Angela Bloom says, bro, bro, the ho ho. <laughs> that was his profile. His social media profile name was Roro Avi. Oh, he's not loving this. I'm going to do your honor for the, to be more efficient with time. I'll show her all the, the text message uh, printouts we have and have her identify them all instead of having to come back each mm -hmm. time. So I'm going to show you what's been marked as States Exhibit 47, 48, 49, and have you look at 47. Mm -hmm. You recognize this? Yes. Okay. You can look at the next one. <laughs> Roro. No, I'm so sorry. You recognize what's in 48? You don't have to change your yes. name. Like, I'm changing my name. Also, in, in 487, there's a couple of other pages. Can you look at it and tell me if it, it uh, fairly and accurately depicts what's in there, that's, that it's accurate? And that you recognize it? Yes, I do. Can you check the next page on 47? We learn, right? See my yeah, ops? Yes, I do. Okay. Now go to 48, so you can check 48 and tell me and tell the court if it fairly accurately depicts what's what you're We're going to read this after seeing yes. too many cases okay. where a man kills the woman and in the 49. baby. If a guy told me he wanted nothing to do with my child, I would forget he ever existed and not ask anything from him. Is me. that fair and accurately depicted? We see patterns in true crime, right? Sadly. Yeah, that's me. That's me. That's you? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> yes, this... Mm. 
always try to imitate, see how he's feeling. Mm. This is him right now, like, mm. <laughs> Right, Eduardo is looking for something. <laughs> Impeach this witness. <laughs> he's looking for something in his papers here. So we know he's up to something. Thank you all for being here and watching with me. Yes, I've got the title right here of who the witness is. Thank you. Marie's coloring. I know people were asking. Goma once says his hand over his mouth is protective and indicates deception, even though he's not speaking. Yeah, you see, Eduardo's doing things here. We know from yesterday. <laughs> Just looking through the messages. <laughs> 47, states 487, 88, and 89. Any objections? No objections, Lord. Be admitted without objection. Sorry for the typing. Each one of them just have one page. 489 is one page, 48 is one page. For the record, 487 is three pages. All right, thank you. <laughs> Elf says he wants to crawl into the nearest hole. Then plead guilty and crawl right in and we'll forget all about uh, I'm him, right? Show you <laughs> what's already been admitted, that's 47. Wait, we gotta see some of this here. I won't put this back here, down here, okay? Here is his other, well, the whole table's attorneys. Here he is. me. PK says, is there a court reporter typing or am I hearing things? It was me typing. <laughs> Guilty as charged. I was typing. Mom to an angel says justice for Griselda and Dominique. Mm -hmm. Just remember, if you guys don't want me to chip in and you don't want all the pictures and the borders and the everything that makes this mine, you could just watch the raw footage on Lawn Crime Network. That's where the stream is from. There's the trial source. Okay, what are they doing now? They're looking through all the text messages. This is a line 8334. Oh, I can't see a thing. Yes. Cameraman. recognize the, the date? That's very unclear. 2018, January the 13th. Yeah. Okay. This is around the time where the child support case is... She's going to... She's going to file. She's going to file. Dude. We would and love to see what text? the hell's going on here. That's Griselda texting me. Okay, can you read that out loud? It's, dude, I'm bawling my eyes out right now. A, which is Anthony, is thinking about giving up his rights. I know I said I'd be okay, but I'm totally not. I literally don't know what I did to deserve such a douche, douchebags as their dads. Jaden and Dom deserve more than this more than them 
and worst part of it all, I, I feel responsible for giving them shitty people as their fathers. Well, now we know that answer too. I'll fix the color now again. I just wanted to change it so we could see what they actually wrote there. which is called a douchebag on text. <coughs> okay. Now uh, I'm, I'm on page two of state's exhibit 47. Teresa, better together to chat about it, right? Starting at the top, can you tell us what uh, what date that is? Um, January 14, 2018. Okay, this is from who to who? Oh. I believe I sent that. Okay. I sent it to Chris. And what do you say? When did you send this? Because I just got it. Dude, fuck him, way he's such a douchebag. He doesn't deserve to ever see nor have anything to do with Dom. Yes, call him a douchebag more. Yes. Okay. Go on. Dom doesn't need anyone but you and your family. He has everything. Don't even try talking with A anymore. Okay, so now you're going to say a slang word. Um, yes, in, in Spanish. Spanish. And I want you to say it and then... We're going to wait for a translation. Is that right, Judge? Oh, yeah. okay. Okay, so, uh, what do you, what slang Spanish word do you say here? I say que chingue su madre. Fuck him. <laughs> do you hear the translator? And then, continue. What else do you say? I said, fuck him with CS, meaning child support, y amono. Yamonos que se vaya, and it's a slang word. Or if you could read it real time, just say it. It's okay. With this good, uh, yes, good, good advice from the bestie, right? Okay, I said, fuck him with child support. Yamonos que se vaya a la verga. Fuck him with the, with CS, and that's it. He can go to hell. Hmm. Pues se vaya a la verga. It's his child biolog biologically, so he needs to support financially. No más hasta ahí, meaning. And that's that. And then what else do you say? Dom will hurt more having a selfish person in and out of his life. This is the advice you're giving her? Yes. And it's good advice. Friday, Friday, I think. Now this is, can you clarify for the record, is this from her to you or you to her? I, I don't know, I can't see and I don't, I don't recall if yeah, it's. Judge, may we approach? Why? Approach? Oh, they're going to be approaching. Yes. Approach, please. Okay. <coughs> Yeah, there he is. Mmm, looking real irritated there. <laughs> Douchebag. I'm writing down all the words I'm learning. Cus, que se vaya a la verga. He can go to hell. I think that's what they said it mean. And yes, uh, when I say, did you hear the translator? I, I know it's electronic. It sounds like an app or, you know, like a, like a Google Translate. I use Google Translate quite a lot because I live in the Netherlands where I don't actually speak the language, so... Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yes, Janice, like learning bad Spanish words. Yes, proudly so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kelsey Fication says, I'm loving the robot voice telling him to have off. Yes. Wildfire says, good woman. No shame there. He deserves this. That The bestie 
gave great advice, right? So the best friend's name is Adriana Flores. That's who's testifying right now. And yeah, she got all the tea. Oh, the lawyer. Okay, let's see what's happening now. Let's try to read. He's like listening. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What is she telling him now? Like, listen, don't look so angry, okay? Shed a tear today. Goals. <laughs> Painting with pity says, I love that he's so irritated. This judge is growing on me. How about you guys? It's not like I didn't like him yesterday. I, I like him. We just like the punctuality a bit, you know? <laughs> if there was any. That's all we like, okay? But it's okay. But I like the judge. He's, he's growing on me. What about you? Be nice. <laughs> okay, I don't know if you can hear the quiet background music. <laughs> judge Joe Lopez. Oh, here's Eduardo Pena. He's standing here. Now what are they approaching about? This one. What? What are you saying, lady? Because we're watching you. Cameras are on you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what are we saying now? Oh, okay. How do we say that? Is it que? Que es tu prisa? Or is it que las tu prisa? What's your problem? Buenos dias, everybody. We're learning some Spanish words in this trial as well. Que se vaya a la verga. I like that one. He can go to hell. Gotta remember that for sentencing. <laughs> Why would I speak Norwegian in the Netherlands if I'm from South Africa? Please explain. <laughs> Do you think I'm in Norway? I'm in Holland. <laughs> Netherlands. Yeah, we ride bicycles, windmills, stir waffles. Yeah, that. Okay, now what are we? What are we looking over? See, I told you, this guy's up to something. He's found something to be like, can we approach? This witness will be impeached. <laughs> I think that's his uh, strategy. So what have we learned so far? So 2015 or 2016, Griselda was going to nursing school, which is also what her sister was saying. She did say on the day she was going to meet, she's going to a park to meet Anthony Burgos. She also said she was going to come over around noon to hang out and watch movies, which didn't her sister yesterday also say that they were going to meet for lunch? I wonder if they were all going to meet up together, you know, for lunch. So he was separated. She said he was, they thought he was separated because, you know, freaking lying, cheating predators online are like, oh yeah, I, I was married, but I'm separated now. And also don't live in Laredo. Meanwhile, you live right there. You live within six miles of that park. With a wife and two kids. Oh, man. Okay, let's see what else. So, yes, they found out Bestie, Adriana Flores, and Griselda found out he was married. He had a wife. Lived in Laredo with two kids. And they even did some drive-bys past the house just to be like, oh, my word. And, yes, they communicated via social media. And they talked about how shitty the boy's dads were because Griselda had another son who was six years old and Dominique was 18 months old. And it sounds like the fathers, neither of them, were offering any child support. Yes. Oh, interesting. Okay, Annie says, I wonder if the sidebar is about the interpretation. It's not fully accurate. Oh, that's, that's a good point. And Annie, I got your emails. Thank you so, so much. Yeah, Sweden and Salty says, never fall for the old separated story. Oh, we could see some of the people in court, okay. Whoa, that'll be such a plot twist. <laughs> well, unless you were saying the text messages, it wasn't him, it's another Anthony. Yes. Damn, Spirit of the Trees, which beach did you go to? I have only been to one where it's such long beaches. 
Like so much beach and so little blue water. <laughs> the water here is brown. Oh, which V word? The one I said? The V word in Spanish is the slangest way to say a man's private. Oh, okay. So, we are waiting for what's happening here. Oh. This lady looks like she's annoying this one. <laughs> and the judge is like, oh, what are we going to do now? Sorry, what? You don't like the translator? <laughs> we don't know that this is what's happening. I'm just filling in the blanks here. We're watching. It could be. And look at him. He's just always sitting there like... <laughs> Eduardo here. Yeah, he's found. He's found something. Oh, okay. Atheist answered, "Why not let the human who's fluent interpret? Yeah, interpret our own words. Good point. Good point." Oh, Lupe Fuentes has got two meanings. Yes, and thank you for being here, everyone. We are busy waiting as they chatting here on sidebar see what's going to happen next they're looking through all these text messages and i'm not sure what the issue is with them right now but yes he's not happy go plead guilty please <laughs> oh <laughs> as i must remember then to say the whole sentence thank you nc I do my best afterwards always with these long trial days to edit out all this waiting and fluff so that if you do watch the replay, in case you're watching now and you're like, oh my word, it's just too long. Firstly, you get timestamps. Then you get the fluff edited out most of the time. And then you also get a, a redo of the timestamps when that edit is done. So <laughs> I hope you like that. Okay, here we go. So what's happening? What's happening? It is something about Friday. Can you find it? Yes. The 8370. Okay. Got it. Okay. okay. So now we're. Adriana. Adriana. She would call me Ari. Ari, okay. Alright, so and I'm gonna ask you for the record to also say this to and from or I okay. sent this to or I received from her. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, I'm just so that's what it's about. So Griselda sent me Friday, I think. I'm sorry, it's just, it's super small. <laughs> Can you? It's tiny. That's, that's a bit better. She put Friday, I think, where he was like, I'm not saying I am. It's just a piece of paper. And that's never going to stop me from seeing him. The only who can say, fuck it, I'm never going to see him is me. That's just a piece of paper that's not going to stop me from seeing him. What was, what was, what were y'all talking about there? I think she was telling me that, um, that it's just the paper, I, I guess, because of him giving up his rights. The next message? And I was, oh, she sent, and I was like, look, that's what you want. Tell me so we can get it over with. And he just said, no, you've never done anything for me to do that to you. 
So she's t what is she telling you? That's what the editor told her. What do you what do you make of that message? Um, I'm trying to remember. I mean, I'm seeing this right, but we're talking about the child support, so I guess he's meaning to do that to you, as in, um, the yeah, you don't know, that's fine. You yeah, the next okay, why can't they show it again? <clears throat> and so, I don't know, like, I'm telling him later that I'm just. I'm just going this coming week because I can't anymore. I was like literally bawling my eyes out that night. I felt so fucking depressed. Like first Jaden, now Dom. Like really? Wait, what the fuck is wrong with me? No mamas. Like really dude, what the fuck is wrong with me? Shit. Okay. <coughs> I'm typing you guys. Grandma. The next message is from Buddha. The next one is from me to her Goodbye. and I go, and what did he say when you told him you were gonna go next week? I think we're I'm talking about the child support. <coughs> I'm starting to remember. She put I haven't told him messaging him later a ver que dice. So true, Grandmama. Thank you for your sticker. Go ahead, the translation, a ver que dice. I have been told that message him later to see what he says. I, and then I said, fuck his opinion. Mm. Now let's see his face. To I, to, I, I told Griselda, fuck his opinion. Yeah. About yes. How about mm. the child support? Yes. Welcome to any family. Do I go ahead and read that? So I put Al Chile pinche vato no vale verga. I hate him and I don't know him. But uh me da un coraje. He doesn't know what he will miss out on. But that little boy is worth so much much more than his part time. Fuck him, fuck him, fuck him. Yes. And not literally puts. <laughs> not literally. Please show us his face. Honestly, fucking dude isn't worth the shit. I hate him and I don't know him, lol, but uh, it pisses me off. He doesn't know what he won't miss out on, but that little boy. The next message is, but that little boy's worth so much more than his part time. Fuck him, fuck him, fuck him. Not literally. Um, <laughs> Not literally. <laughs> interpret any clarification or what? I think it's, we can move on. He, she put not literally with emojis I'm, I'm guessing it was like laughing faces and no mom is haha not literally um, look at him, look uh, at him. Fuck, haha. <laughs> yeah dude he's like oh man but yeah she put but yeah I have to tell you the whole combo so you can know everything. <clears throat> Thank you. The next message up on top is line 8380 on 114.18. Okay, start. So, good is a lot text me I'm telling him later so I'm bound to get all depressed and shit when we talk since I know he's going to probably some slick shit mm. way yeah. he's and then she puts he's like I'm not living there anymore and I don't know when I'll even be there like I do we we catch up we catch up tomorrow but bitch don't let your phone die Oh, just in case I get all but hurt. So she she wrote that to me. She was such a good bestie. Um, that she's gonna that she's gonna talk to him 
that they're going to talk so she's going to end up being all sad and depressed so for me to have my phone on standby just in case she needs to call me. She put, la fala o no, but really, culerita. Fala o no, but really, pussy. Nope. And she put, and yeah, that's what I told him, that he literally had no idea if he th he's, if he's thinking or is going to give up his rights, pero pues, I do it, I don't know, emoji faces. I bet he's never seen these and messages yeah, before. Like or maybe he has. Maybe he had no idea if he thinking or is going to give up his rights, but all will do. I don't know. Next slide. I, I texted her, I'll be on standby, love, don't worry, but message me through Facebook or something. Because I don't know why I'm not getting messages all day, a day late, unless I message first. So I was having issues with my phone. And she puts, okay, yeah, I will. Tomorrow for sure, too. I go back on Tuesday. <clears throat> yeah, Randall says, I wish I had a bestie like her. She's a really great bestie. And to acknowledge, did she ever uh, file for child support? Yes, yeah, she did. I really hope he does stand up and say, guilt. Okay, I'm pleading guilty. That would be amazing. At what point will he crack? Yeah, dude, you got options. Mm, it's did embarrassing. She, uh, who, if anyone, did she advise that she was going to be fighting? <laughs> he looks really uncomfortable. Like, who did she mention? Who did she tell? Um, she told me, and, and I'm sure her family. And I don't know who else. And Anthony. Are you regretting it? Look, he looks mortified, honestly. He does, he does. Just trying to stay prideful, maintaining his self respect. <laughs> Day. <laughs> yes, Lisa says she was needing his help in signature on some documents so she could get help with daycare expenses. Exactly. Just yes, it think a about that, sir. Take a little bit, but it'll Amy <laughs> says his pride is hurt. Caroline, usually a narcissist will never crack and admit, right? They want the last word, they want control. Usually, yes. Regretting his decisions now. <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do is start over on this side, line nine four four two. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, um, she's telling me, dude, A just replied, A is Anthony, what the fuck do I say 
where are you when I need you? And then she puts booties, meaning like, that was like a nickname, right? Um, I wasn't answering. And what was going on? Um, well, Anthony had just replied to her and she was trying to tell me, but I'm, I wasn't answering because my phone was, I was having issues with my, that's a text message, so I was having issues with my phone. Uh, at this time, February 12th, is, is she already moving forward with the child support? Yes. That's why he's reaching out to her? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Remember anything significant that happened on that day? Um, yes. March 25th. That was the day of the spider bite. That's my new phone number. It's the first time. So that that's that I had just day. gotten a new phone. Yeah, that was a phone call she she made. She called me that day. Yes. And this is about 15 days before, uh, prior to Dominic's death, correct? Yes. What can you tell us about that day uh, from that morning, if you remember anything that happened? So, um, I, she, and she goes to meet up with Anthony at the Winfield Park. March 25th, okay. Um, Are you aware of this meeting? I don't recall if I knew beforehand, before her going. I just received that call around noon. Um, and that's when she starts explaining to me what had happened. And what happened? Um, from what I remember, I don't remember the whole conversation. Um, I just remember her calling me crying. Okay, she, let's talk about that. She calls you crying. Yes. She was crying. She was really emotional, very, uh, she was angry mm -hmm. that um, she had gone to the park. She was regretting her going. Oh. And while she was, she was crying on this conversation? Yeah, she, she was just crying and crying. What kind of things was she, was she saying? She was just saying that, um, well, I can hear the baby crying in the background. Um, she was just like um, that she was regretting going over to go meet up with Anthony that um, it didn't go as planned she just wanted him to see the baby you know to have a little relationship you know just to meet him um, and you know talk about the child support um, and he had said something along the lines with um, me vas a odiar por lo que voy a hacer Meaning, you're gonna hate. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Not sure, man. I'll be there. Do I keep on? Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, I'm gonna ask you. You're, you're gonna you? hate me for what I'm going to do. Okay. Is that accurate oh. to what the translator just said? Yes. You're gonna hate me for what I'm about. What I'm gonna do? Yes. And. And what? What if anything do you say or do? Well, I told her that she sh that sounded like a threat, so she should put um, a restraining order against him. You're going to hate me for what I'm that going to do. That was your advice, for her to go get a restraining order? Yes, I told her to, and just to be careful, to be careful and, and not to meet up with him again. Well, that was around that time. Yes, good advice, bestie. 
Did she ever go and get a restraining order? Not, not that I know of, no. Where the sand go, court? Um, later on that day, um, we had already, we had a concert to attend that, that night. Um, so I texted her like around four and I was like, are you ready? The Bad Bunny concert. In, in the arena, yes. So I text her around four, um, and I said, hey, are you getting, are you ready? Are we still going? Or something like that. And she told me that she was at the hospital with Dominic because she thought that he had got bitten by a spider or something, that he was in pain. And, did, and what, did she end up going with you to the concert, or what happened to Dominic? Yeah, so she was at the, at the emergency room, and he was getting treated. And so he, I guess they gave him antibiotics. Um, he got treated and they released him. And we did end up going to the concert later on that night. Where did she go? With her mom. Mr. Bob? Yeah. Oh, Eduardo. What you got, sir? Good, oh, it's not him. Good morning. Good morning. What? Yeah, microphones. Thank you for being here. Um, I think, and I know everyone in this room is very sorry for your loss. Um, you were Griselda's best friend. Yes. And more than that, you were the last person to see both Griselda and Dominic alive. Yes. And that that's a very heavy burden, isn't it? Yes. And, uh, ma'am, you, uh, you, you testified on direct examination that you never actually met uh, Anthony, is that correct? Correct. Right. And you never saw Anthony and Griselda together, correct? Correct. So... Everything that you know about their relationship is from Griselda, is that correct? Correct. Okay. And uh, just very briefly, <coughs> I want to talk about uh, the evening, uh, actually the 25th. And uh, the 25th stands out because that's the day that you went to the Bad Bunny concert. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And... Uh, you testified on direct examination that Griselda called you from the emergency room. Did I understand that correctly? No, she did not call me from the emergency room. Okay. So she called you, and that was the exhibit that the state showed you. Is that the record? Is she that correct? From the text messages? Well, the last exhibit they oh, showed okay. you was a, a phone call, as I understood. Yes, she, but she was not at the emergency yet. She was on her way to the emergency room. I don't, she was not on, oh, I didn't know about the emergency room until she texted me. And uh, you actually had uh, messaged with Griselda earlier um, that day on the 25th in the morning. Isn't that correct? By message, um, I'm I'm pretty sure since we did speak daily. So um, she messaged you on Facebook very early in the morning on the 25th. Mm -hmm. Isn't that correct? I don't recall. I I'm sure she did. I'm I'm not too sure. Okay. Would it refresh your recollection to see a, a copy of your Facebook messenger? Yeah. Judge Panatrich. You may. Monica says, my husband's Puerto Rican and also a Border Patrol agent. This really upsets him. Bad name for all agents. I'm so sorry. Yes, he's giving a bad name to all agents. And so did David Ortiz, right? That was another Border Patrol agent, also from Laredo, Texas, unfortunately. That one was sentenced in December last year. He was a serial killer. But welcome to the stream. Thank you for being here. Can I pass it for the Do you intend to offer that? 
These um, are the bad apples. Depends on what. Okay. Go ahead. Well, I'll take that. So, uh, look at uh, look at those messages and uh, let me know um, when your recollection is refreshed. Exactly. True. 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 Life. <laughs> Don't stare at her over your glasses, Mister. She ain't scared of you. Tiff, you say, who cares? What's your point, dude? It almost sounds like you're saying, well, you don't know that she met up with him that day, do you? Yes, I, I do recall these messages. Okay. And um, are those um, Facebook messages, do they accurately uh, reflect the messages that you exchanged with Griselda on the morning of the 25th? Um, I don't Yes, it's just not the morning, it's like after. In so, um, I know you're looking at it, and you say it's the afternoon because it says 13. UTC uh, 140, 1340, is that why you're saying it's the afternoon? Yeah, it's like after. Okay. Um, so, uh, they should be five hours behind UTC, I think, so. It could be the morning. They better clarify that. I would um, ask you. Well, if come here. I apologize. May I have the back so I can mark it? And Are you going to offer it? I am going to offer. Okay, because there was no objection. To the state, say hi quickly. Say hi quickly. I was trying to avoid that. Okay. What is your the number on it? It'll be D1. They're all asking for you. Then it's one. Yeah. Being offered the objection. Okay. And he came to say hi to you guys. <laughs> is, is one and two or one? Oh. I see two exhibit tag on it. It's two pages. Right. So um, I'll do. This one is fine. Defendants one. Defendants 1.2 will be page 166, and Defendants 1.1 will be page 165. Oh. Defendants oh. 1.1 and 1.2 are there. There is no one. It's occurring so much. Who's in the house? So, and I apologize, I put them in the bin. I'm going to retreat it and go back. Go ahead. It's trying to obey the court. Is your dad home now? Okay, go look. Go look. <laughs> Mr. Grizzly just got home too. So, ma'am, if I could have you look at uh, page 165. I apologize. Uh, page 166, as it's marked at the top, which for the record is Defendants 1.2. Um, and uh, at the bottom of the page, it's the fourth message from the bottom. It says, Author Adriana Lynette. I is that you? Yes. Okay. And uh, And that's where it says sent, and then it's 2018-325. Yes. Is that correct, ma'am? Yes, that's what it says here. And then it says 1335-56 UTC. Is that correct, ma'am? 1335, yeah, UTC, mm-hmm. And uh, I'm going to try to use the... The yeah. album. It's Have to focus out of that because I think it's completely. Uh, oh man, while well, they're sorting, I'm not trying to distract you guys, but they're sorting out all the text messages and stuff. Fury came to say hi. Mr. Grizzly got me a boba tea, which you know is my favorite thing ever. So, yes. <laughs> and then 
And so um, you can see that the message I previously referred to you is the uh, one that's mighty uncomfortable. 3546 UTC. And then you have written to Griselda, why are you awake? Is that yeah. correct? Yes. Okay. And um, that UTC doesn't refer to central standard time that we're in. Okay. Is that the way you understand it? Yeah, that's uh, that. I was getting confused with the time. Okay. Um, I told and, you guys, uh, the UTC. So we're not sure, actually, if it's afternoon. Is that correct? From my from my Facebook records, that would be sent in, in like, after midnight. Okay. And uh, she replied, um, and then the next, and these are, the way that they're ordered here is in reverse order. Yes. So um, you asked her, why are you awake? And then she said, I can't sleep. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then um, Griselda, in the next message, wrote to you and said, all night with Dom, and right now I just woke up. Yes. Okay. And, then, uh, and then you all have um, a discussion about going to the concert. Is that correct? Yes. And uh, I'm, I'm pointing to what is labeled as 1336-56 UTC. It's the fourth message from the top. And you said, yay, what are you wearing? Correct. Right. And then the message above that is from Griselda to you where she says, IDK, which you understood the meant, I don't know um, what he has. Is that, is that correct, ma'am? Yes. Okay. And uh, he is sweet and salty. you understood that to mean in Amazing stuff to means not. Dominic, is that right? Yes. Griselda was telling you she doesn't know what he has because she said that she was up all night with Dominic um, and that she woken up. Is, is, is that correct, ma'am? Yes. Okay. And just so everyone understands, this is the morning of the 25th before um, she was taking Dominic to see Ronald. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And uh, I'd ask you to look at page 165, which has been uh, admitted as Defense Exhibit 1.1. The defense um, is questioning then, right now. Um, Griselda, and, and again, everyone, so everyone understands these are in reverse order, the way Facebook uh, provides them, um, writes, uh, yes, and he's coughing. And could you read that next line? It's the bottom of the page. Yeah, yes, and he's coughing. Así como que se va a vomitar. His eyes are really watery. He just wants to be carried in I know way. Like he's going to throw up. I don't need to. I'm sorry. I did you hear that? I have Did you hear? Yes. She heard it. <laughs> the judge. Um, she heard it. Did you understand that when Griselda wrote that that uh, Dominic had been coughing all night and it looked like he was going to vomit? Yes. Okay. Um, and that his eyes were really watery. Uh, and he just wanted to be carried. Yes. And so that was the entire night before um, Dominic saw Rob. Is, is that correct? Um, according to the, to the date, yes. Okay. Um, and you have no reason to suspect that Facebook has altered the date or anything. Is that no. correct? No. Okay. And uh, matter of fact, um, he's like, Rubbing his head, messages look at up. So it's three messages from the bottom. You respond to her um, with, that's Aaron right now, dude. Uh, is that correct? Yes. And uh, Aaron, is Aaron your child? Aaron is my child, yes. Okay, so your child was sick at the same time, is that correct? Man? Yes. Okay. And uh, Griselda, in the next line, she describes in more detail about uh, Dominic's condition and it was all night was waking up crying and with the fever and whatnot. 
Thank you, Lenny. And then eventually, as you've already described, you both decide to go to the Bad Fun concert. Is that right, Matt? Yes. Okay. Is he trying to guilt trip her by the concert or what? Look at her face. She's like, so, I want to get it. And I just want to, this is summarizing it. And uh, from your understanding and what Griselda had told you, Dominic was sick prior to seeing Ronald on the 25th. Is that your understanding, ma'am? According to the messages, yes. Okay. If you're only joining the stream now, welcome. Day two, uh, morning questions. session. Thank you for your patience, ma'am. Thank you. I'm, I'm rolling my eyes with <laughs> the defense a little bit. I'm like, oh. Could you all uh, approach real quick? Mr. Yeah, Pena, yeah. Mr. Mr. Pena, Eduardo, let's approach everyone. I don't know for what. But, okay, if you're only joining now, welcome. This is day two of the Ronald Anthony Burgos Aviles trial. He's 33 years old now. He was 28 years old at the time of the crime. And he is charged with murdering 28-year-old Griselda Hernandez. And she was, well, she was 27 at the time. And their baby, Dominic Hernandez. So he had told her from online dating, he met her online in 2015, that he was, you know, separated from his wife, which was a lie. He also said he didn't live in Laredo, Texas, which was a lie. We see that happen a lot on um, online dating, right? So... It's not always the case, but online interactions can have some red flags at times, you know. Break, you take a little morning break. It won't be, hopefully you can keep it inside of 10 minutes, okay. I don't believe them. I do not believe you, Judge. <laughs> I just don't believe you. Keep it inside of 10 minutes. So we talking about 45. <laughs> I mean, no disrespect to the judge. I'm just starting to learn their timing, you know what I mean? Gotta learn. So the thing is... um, Met him in 2015 online. He said, oh, he's separated. He doesn't live in Laredo. Meanwhile, uh, Griselda and her bestie found out, wait a minute, they did some digging, you know, on social media because as soon as Griselda got pregnant, guess what? Ronald, who said to her and everyone, his name's actually um, Anthony Burgos, didn't go by his name, you know, said, oh, he doesn't want anything to do with that. Like, he does, he does, he's not going to take care of the kid. Oh, hell no. So Griselda's like, don't worry, I'll raise the child on my own then but then you know she thought about it and thought about it and by the time that Dominique was 18 months old actually before that already a year old she's like you know he really should be helping with daycare and with child support so I'm going to go to the Texas courts and file for that and she did now in the meantime her and her bestie found out um wow he's actually he's actually married oh my word he's actually got two kids so and the kids were, oh man, what what age were they again? Three and? Stand by? I wrote it down here somewhere. Ten and three at the time. Wow. And whoa, the three-year-old um, looked just like, like his face looks so similar to Dominic. Right? Uh, Kimberly Davis, you say, keep it up. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You guys are so supportive. So I've got my Red Bull that I've already finished there. <laughs> keep it up. And I'm going to continue recapping now. Got boba tea from Mr. Grizzly. He knows it's my favorite. Honeydew boba tea. And so I'm all energized. I'm good. Feeling great. <laughs> Two coffees, a bread bull, and a boba. What could go wrong, right? <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Kimberly. Really appreciate it. So they find out, oh my word, he's actually married he has two kids what they did some drive-bys and everything and Griselda was set on two things one that he needs to also chip in you know for child support she was tired of these two dads who were not chipping in because she said that in text messages we learned today that the dad of her six-year-old son at the time was also not really helping did I understand that correctly because that's what I got and so the thing is that She's like, he need, he's, I'm going to take him to court. I'm going to go and file for this. He needs to chip in. So she wanted that. And she also wanted him to have a relationship with Dominic. She wanted Dominic to have a dad, right? Even though he's surrounded by such kind and loving family members. I mean, why wouldn't she want that? So, yes, unfortunately, um, he managed to, to lure her 
there on April 9th, 2018. They had met on March 25th. Oh, sorry, 2018. So April 9th, 2018 is when the murders happened. Two weeks before that, on March 25th, he had already said, okay, I'll meet up with you. But then he injected Dominique with something, and we still don't know what that is. We don't know. Um, because they said with a bit of tissue, they've still got leftist samples. They would have to know exactly what to test for. They don't know exactly what to test for, what could have been in that syringe. And we were asking, well, can't they, could they not have tested the syringe? What's in it? What's in his bag? Did he have steroids? Did he have something? What did he have access to? All that kind of stuff. To maybe narrow it down. I don't know. The thing is, um, maybe we'll never know. That'll be a tough one to accept, right? And so, when the first time he meets his son... Uh, from a relationship that he had, which is why we've taken the title mistress out now, because it's not like she was aware that, oh, I'm a mistress. She she was dating him thinking, oh, okay, he's separated from his wife. He's not living in Laredo. Like, cool guy, you know, he's taking me out. And he probably did all the love bombing, as we can hear sometimes, um, from yesterday's text messages and today's. So they went out from time to time. And then she got pregnant at some point in 2015. And then he was like, oh, hell no. That's not for me. Yep. So, um, yes, he lured her to the Father McNabur Park in Laredo, Texas, where he was actually a Border Patrol agent supervising. He was a supervisory officer supervising that area that day. And so he knew it well. And he was going to try, this is based on what the prosecutor said in opening statements, to make it look like smugglers attacked her. Just random smugglers attacking her like oh my word the guy honestly janet murphy <laughs> is that for fury thank you so much if you guys didn't see the youtube short i put on my second channel today go check it out you should see his treat basket it's full <laughs> thank you so much for spoiling fury and he's got little sticks and everything in there as well he's got a whole box as well he's a very spoiled cat okay <laughs> thank you so much and it's all because of you guys yes Alpha Shewell says the syringe they found, oh, that's true as well, isn't necessarily the one he used. Very good point, very good point. They just said it was 18 gauge, and they believe it was an 18 gauge needle used on Dominic two weeks before he was murdered. And for those of you who don't know about this case at all yet, if you're just joining in now, please read the description box, okay? Read up there as well, and check out the first episode where we did a full trial prep so that you're all up to speed. But what we do know so far is that he, he hid in the bushes, he told um, Griselda to park near the baseball fields and all that, where one would normally park, at the Father McNabar Park, and then just take a walk. Just take a walk to a secret meeting spot. Maybe she thought she was going to a picnic or something. We still don't know exactly the details of how he got it to go there, you know, because she pushed the stroller there on the walking trails and went to meet up with him. And she even told her sister, yeah, it's a public place. You know, you can play there and everything. So I don't know what she, what she was thinking where... You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure he would have said, I would guess. He's like, come for a picnic. I'm setting it up for us. Can't we just imagine? And then when she got there to where he was, his truck was parked fairly close by. He was on duty. Then he jumped out of the bushes and he ambushed her with a knife. He stabbed her 27 times. She was found face down with a cluster of injuries on her neck, but also ear, head, everything. It was really savage. And even the fact that she was face down and then he covered the baby's face when he stabbed the baby is like, what a coward, you know? They often say um, with serial killers, if they cover, well, it's killers in general, but I, I, before I started my YouTube channel, I wrote four true crime book, books on serial killers. Um, I was planning to do like a hundred books on them, but then I joined YouTube and I don't write books anymore because you can't do both. This is already 12 to 14 hours a day for me. Thank you. All the preparation. <laughs> so I can't do that too. I wish. I wish I had a, a clone. But the point is, they say when they cover the victim's face um, or eyes or something, it shows that they have some form of shame there. And they, they this, this, it's cowardly, you know? <laughs> Alina says, I was enjoying my anger. Dang fury. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but okay. <laughs> Um, so Barbara says, I wonder if her phone was recovered or he took it. I, I do think it was recovered from what I remember, but let me know what you guys remember as well. Whoa, happy Hermit says, for Fury needs salmon, you rock G. He had salmon this morning. He is so spoiled. Oh my word. 
He's going to be upgrading from the little mousselines to actual salmon soon. <laughs> thank you so, so much. Perneal, thank you so much for reminding everyone to not victim blame. That is not what we do here at all in this community. We are kind to victims of crime, to missing persons and their families. And if that's not for you, then maybe it's not the community for you. And I'm sad about that because we're a lovely community. So if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so that you can become part of this community with us today and join us for many uh, cases, trials. I don't only cover trials, definitely not. I only cover my first trial. What was that? Three months ago? Now I've got furies in my mouth. Here three months ago, starting with the Letitia Stauch trial. Oh, yes. And we really loved watching that trial together as a community. And so now... Yeah, I cover trials too. We cover missing persons cases, um, all sorts of crime, DV cases, coercive control, serial killers from time to time. Hopefully there's not more of those. Oh, Brian Koberger, all of that. Oh, my word. All kinds of things. So anyway, that's, that's that. And so what else can I say? Let me continue with a story of at the Father McNabo Park when he ambushes Griselda and stabs her and she's fighting for her life. Um, they even had the title Mama Bear in the opening statements as like a cue, you know, uh, for the prosecutor. He had it on the screen, Mama Bear. And she went into like Mama Bear mode. She was just fighting for her life and fighting to protect her son. And unfortunately, she did not survive. Um, and so then he unbuckled his son. That's his son, you know, who looks so much like his own son from his wife, right? He unbuckles him from the stroller carries him and puts him on the grass, lifts his shirt and stabs him in the chest and in the uh, jugular. I won't go in, I keep on wanting to say more detail of what they shared, but it's too hard. It's too hard. But a big injury on his neck. That's what I'll say. Oh, my word. And so, um, yeah, he died like that. And then what did he do? Went home. Shower changed. Got back in uniform came back and was like, whoa, look what I found. <laughs> what a dumbass, honestly. It's one of those that I'm sure on my second channel at some point, Karin will have to weigh in on this guy. Brad Hamill says, I'm so happy you're doing live trials. Let's have a thriller. <laughs> you must be an OG. You are an OG. I know, Brad. <laughs> but for those who don't know, thriller. It's thriller time. Um, you can see you've got your badge as well. You're an OG. Thank you so much, Brad. <laughs> I'm, I am loving live trials with you guys. I just wish the courts would more often have like Zoom links or Webex, just like Letitia Stark's one. That was so cool. You know, then we can really see every angle because then they had multiple angles of the courtroom. This is pretty much just one, you know, one camera. So where that cameraman is looking is where we're looking. Whereas when it's Zoom or Webex, then they have multiple cameras that the court controls. And then we can see many different views and zoom in and stuff. That was really nice. So let's hope for more of those. Yeah, this is true. Dana said, did he not tell Griselda he wanted to see the baby's leg injury before she took him back to the doctor? Maybe that was how he got it. That is how. That is exactly how. So he lured her to a park on March 25th, and that's when he, the baby got the leg injury, which is allegedly uh, Ronald injecting him with something. And then he lured her there on April 9th by saying he wants to check out Dominic's leg before she takes him to the hospital. So you're right. What I'm saying is, how did he get her from the parking area, which is a public place, playing fields, basketball field, oh, sorry, uh, baseball fields. <laughs> I think there's basketball there, but baseball, okay. How did he get her to then walk on those dusty walking trails and then meet up with him in the bushes, basically, is what I'm saying. I wonder if he said, hmm, come for a picnic or what, you know? What did he say to get her to go there? Uh, Karin Prinsler, welcome to membership. Karin, are you from South Africa? What? Diamond Heart says, how bad were the bruises on the sweet baby's face that they knew he covered it? Oh. Maybe, I think they, no, it's because they found the shirt lifted up. Right? And there were no holes in the shirt. That's how they know. Because there's no holes in the shirt. Olivia, everyone keeps asking this. I'm not too sure. I'm not 100% sure. I, I believe so. Yesterday, I'm still looking at all these articles that people are sending me um, ab about his wife. She's apparently a customs agent. Um, and people are saying, some people said yesterday that are local, that are in the chat. So if you do know, let me know. 
um, that she, yes she is and others say no they're divorced and others say they are di getting divorced I don't know I wish I knew the actual answer right now okay <laughs> Janet <laughs> I'm only saying this as a safety lesson Janet Klumper says where in the Netherlands do you live I'm Dutch can't just give up my address on the internet you know what I mean <laughs> but generally in Utrecht <laughs> yes Oh my word, Mermaid Daniel. Okay, now the chat is glitching again. YouTube, you make me so mad. So, Mermaid Daniel says, congratulations, G, on 166,000 subscribers. Really? Did we hit the milestone? Damn, let's have a look. Let's have a look. We love new milestones. Yes, we hit the new milestone. Thank you so much. You got a keen eye, Mermaid Daniel. Thank you very much. Very exciting. All right, so I saw I saw the court cameras move a little bit. Right, like this. How about this? Okay. I don't recall this. Didn't they say he texted her to say meet along the trail because it's so beautiful? I don't recall that. Wish I was superhuman and could literally absorb every single fact. You know, I, I wish I could remember all the things, but please remind me of things like that. I don't remember that. That it's so beautiful. I don't remember that because I'm still wondering. How exactly did it get it to to go there? I know they described how beautiful it is. They did describe. It's like nature, beautiful, right by the river. I'm just wondering, man. Because, yeah, to think that he actually managed to isolate her like that. Wow. Uh, Cheryl. Cheryl D.W. Oh, wait. Am I reading it right? Yeah, Cheryl DW. <laughs> That's a cool name. Thank you. Thank you so much for becoming a member. Welcome to all the new members. Andrew Mack, do you cover murder trials in the Netherlands or are they not as excited? I don't know what excited means, but they're not covered widely in the media, number one. They don't happen as often, number two. And number three, I'm very concerned about my own safety and wouldn't really be covering a trial right here where I live because then I'm just putting myself at risk. And... Number four, 83% of my audience is American, and the rest is really Canadian. <laughs> American, Canadian, and then the small percentage is 0.1% Dutch. So, yeah. And the rest, UK, a little bit Europe, Australia, huh? <laughs> so, but mostly American. I'm not 100% sure of this. Debbie says, is the wife actually in blue there or no? Not from what I can see. I will bring this over quickly. I don't want to... Don't, don't bug this lady, okay, guys? I want to bring this over for a second. Wait. This is apparently... Um, apparently his, his wife. CBP officer. So is that also Border Patrol or what? See? CBP officer. This is the, these are the articles you guys are sending to me. Was born in Orlando, Florida, grew up as one of eight siblings in her household. After high school, she attended Valencia College in Orlando, where she pursued a degree in criminal justice. Wow. So I'm not sure if this is her or not, but this is what you guys are sending me. You know, so if you do know, let me know. But, I mean, if that's her, is she in court? I'm not sure. We'll have to keep an eye out. Again, I want to say, don't bother that lady. We don't show articles and photos for you to bother her, Okay. It's so, it's so sad we even have to say that. But you know how it goes on YouTube sometimes. Sometimes YouTubers themselves are freaking doxing, harassing, knocking on doors. Just, oh, no, 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 no. Lex Lux says, reminder, meet people in very public places. And the thing is that she had told her sister, yeah, it's, it's a public place. It's the park. They knew the park well. The problem is, that's what I'm saying. How did he then lure her to the, to the bushes? Because she did. That was the initial idea. And sometimes that's also how these types of predator suspects, DV guys, wh whatever category you want to put them in, douchebags, that they would just quickly flip the script or quickly say, oh, you're there now. Well, I'm working, so can you just quickly come here? I'm just parked over here. Can you maybe just, just walk this way? It's a short walk. You know what I mean? They can, they can get you when, you when you're already there. Like, okay, I'm meeting in a public place, and then they just slightly tweak the plan. Still have your guard up. Be aware that the plan is always to meet in a public place. I agree. It's Sam says, hi G. 
Yeah, he hid the phones on his vest in the car and forgot about them. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. I remember that he hid them on his vest and then he forgot about them and he's like, Telefono. There we go. Thank you. See, sometimes you guys need to trigger my memories. Thank you, it's Sam. I really appreciate it. All right. You see, how long has it been? They said 10 minutes. I don't believe them. <laughs> um... Andrew Mack, I oh, I completely understand your question. I'm kind of answering it because I get asked this all day long on emails and everywhere. It's kind of like blanket answer because people ask me that all the time. But to me, it's logical. To me, even if I lived in America, I'm not even sure I would cover it. <laughs> then I don't know if I would be doing true crime over there because I want to be safe, man. You've got to stay safe. But safety is my number one and I'm like hyper vigilant with safety. But um, yeah, no one does it like America is the answer there. And... I, I just haven't seen it like that, especially not in Europe. I mean, so many privacy laws, they do things so differently. So, yes, I do monitor some crimes, though, to see what happens here on NL Times, <laughs> local news, and also the police sites. I'm always looking to see what happens because they're like, nothing happens here. I'm like, something happens. I know the DV rates are pretty high. Okay, something happens. I know that, ooh, this is a difficult word to say, human. And then the T word. Human tea, you know what I'm talking about. That's pretty high in the Netherlands too. <laughs> Tori says, do they only have one bathroom in the courthouse? I think that's the problem. You've nailed it, Tori. That's why. They're always late. Like all the time. Oh, my word. Yeah, this is true as well. Blue Canary. Was someone saying that? Cheaters are cheaters. It wouldn't matter if she was a supermodel and outrageously rich. She'd still cheat. Who do you think of first when you say that? I think of that Maroon 5 guy. <laughs> Google me. Thank you for being a member for five months. What are we Googling? Okay. Exactly. This is well. Rainy Maine. South Africa we did. They did stream trials. Like Oscar Pistorius high profile trials, right? But uh, Rainy says in the UK we don't have access to TV cameras in the courtroom. Susan says, is it possible he chased her to the bushes? No, it's a little bit of a far walk. She walked there and they said that they saw um, camera footage of her walking with that stroller, walking along those trails. Okay, they're back. The judge is back in the house. <laughs> Sound is not on. Judge, what is it now? What are we saying? Oh, did we have a snack? So, what's the time in Texas now? Okay, firstly, let's look at quickly, quickly. The time in Idaho is 10 o'clock in the morning. Coburger's hearing is at 1.30. I think we'll be in the afternoon session when it happens, which is fine, because sometimes that's delayed. Court sound still isn't on. What is it now? Oh, man, what did they come up with now? And Texas time now is 11, almost 11. Yeah, almost 11. Let's hope they remember to put the sound on. What? Lex Lex says, Grizzly called Adam out so cool. What are we talking about? <laughs> Did I miss something? Kerry says, yes, if you guys are wondering, just look on the top, okay? If anyone's asking, is death penalty on the... Look there. Ronald Anthony Burgos Avalis is facing the death penalty for the murders. Of Griselda Hernandez, 27, and their baby, Dominique Hernandez. It's all up there, okay? If you're looking for info, look at the screen. Look at the description box. You're going to know. You're going to know. I'll keep you informed, okay? <laughs> oh, my word. Miss Frisco says, imagine us here for hours and no sound. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Imagine that. Judge? There's a sidebar. What's happening? Can we put a sound back on? <laughs> Tea tree says, how long until execution date? That's all that matters now. Yeah, 
Ooh, yeah. So, uh, Roro says, anyone else love his chair? I do. Look at that nice high back chair. Very nice chair. Kim says, 158 a.m. Well, thank you for being here with us at 158 a.m. It must be 2 a.m. now, right? Let's see. 159. We don't have cameras in the courtrooms here in Australia either. Yeah. <laughs> Jay Rossi says, gee, I have also covered cases all over the place. I have. But mostly my audience is most responsive and I give the audience what they want because that's how YouTube works to American cases because you guys are mostly American. Yes. Okay. Uh, what is happening? Sorry, I'm typing. <laughs> Little ASMR typing sounds. I think this judge, is it just me or is he getting annoyed with the defense at this point? Let's sip some boba. Well, Gerda with high profile ones, they have it. Henry van Breda. Oscar Pistorius and many others um, but well <laughs> yeah I imagine it I know what you're saying oh my word are they 3.5 let me check damn a lot of people watching I think there's three three, three point yeah 3.5 you're right Debbie welcome everyone if you are new here to this trial if you were like oh no I need to catch up watch the, the trial prep okay watch it at 1.5 speed if you want I love 1.5 speed and 2, two times speed. Watch that first episode. And then for the other days, which was only yesterday, day one, there's a morning and afternoon session. It's clearly labeled for you on a playlist. You could just go to the timestamps and just see, you know, what did you miss? What do you want to skip to? What do you want to see? I've labeled it for you. So you can catch up real quick. I'm saying that because I used to get overwhelmed <laughs> by seeing trials, long trial days, and just like, where do I even start? And like, oh my word, it's like an eight-hour stream or a four-hour stream. So if you feel like that, don't worry. I got your back. <laughs> I know how you feel then. Oh yes, Pampered Glampus is way past ten minutes. You see? You see? We cannot we cannot trust the ten minutes. Jackie Letendre. Letendre. Letendre, I feel like I've got to say. Thank you so much for your $2 super sticker. That's so sweet. Okay. Jury's coming back in. Sound back on. Oh, we're drinking, is that water? Christine, you gotta refresh your page. I think there's more likes if you refresh it. However, yes, please hit the like button, everyone, so that everyone who doesn't know we live right now, watching this trial together, can come and join us. Like and share. Share it on YouTube, Reddit, Facebook, Twitter, wherever you can. <laughs> so share it on YouTube. Don't know how you're going to do that. Unless you have a channel and you want to put it on your community tab <laughs> or something. Yes. Tracy's like, gee, is not a fan of the tardiness. No. I'm actually handling it quite well, don't you think? Because I really <laughs> don't like tardiness. I got your back. Erin Aloha says, geez, got our backs. Oh, is the sound coming back on? Sound. Can't hear a thing. Next witness, please. There we go. Next witness. Bradley Dennison. Ooh, Border Patrol agent. Dennison or Dennison? Dennison. Bradley Dennison. All right, thank you. Bradley Dennison. I hope I spell it right. Border Patrol agent. Yes, let's hear this. I want to okay. hear this. <clears throat> so who's it now? This is the witness name. Okay, here we go. Good morning, sir. You've been sworn in already, have you not? Yes, sir. Yeah, please have a seat. You got some water already? Okay. Yes, sir. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Can you please state your name for the record? Uh, Bradley Dennison. Okay. I'm just going to ask you for purposes of the court reporter to speak loudly and into that microphone. You want to pull it up or move your throat, your, your chair in. Okay. Um, Mr. Dennison, uh, how are you employed? Uh, I work for the United States Border Patrol okay. as a Border Patrol agent. Okay. And how long have you been with the uh, Border Patrol? Uh, at this time, a little over 23 years, sir. Okay. What are your current assignments? Uh, I'm currently assigned at the Loretta North Station to the day shift. Uh, throughout your career, what uh, cities have you been assigned to? Uh, I've only, my, my entire career, I've been here in Laredo. Okay, great, great. Before we get started, I, I want to go over some terminology uh, that the, that's unique to the Border Patrol. Thank you. And, uh, or law enforcement, rather, but, uh, and also discuss a little bit of what the standard uniform is, um, you know, how it is you all wear your, your uniform. I see today you are in uniform. Yes, sir. Okay. And as part of your uniform, you carry a, 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 a Sam Brown or a belt? Yes, sir. Okay. And, and what okay. does that uh, consist of? Uh, so our, our typical duty belt is, uh, we carry obviously a firearm, uh, we're required to carry two magazines, uh, spare ammunition magazines, a uh, less lethal use of force weapon, uh, handcuffs, radio. Uh, also consists, it consists of an inner belt that goes in on the pants inside the belt loops, outer belt that goes outside, and those two belts are held together uh, with a minimum of four uh, belt keepers. Belt, belt keepers, okay. Belt keepers, yes. Uh, would you mind, uh, do, you, do you have that equipment, some of that equipment on today? Yes, sir, I do. Your Honor, can you show the ladies and gentlemen? Yes, please, please show us the belt keepers. Show, uh, do some show and tell with, with oh. the jury so that oh, no. can, can we see you. Can, come can you come down here? And uh, I'm asking you this mm. over here. Just, uh, just kind of walk us through what you. Now they want to show us. So, obviously, like I said, inner belt goes on the pants itself inside the belt loops. Um, outer belt, as you can see, holds all of my heavier uh, equipment uh, sidearm, magazines, uh, flashlight, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, keepers that I mentioned uh, will be like here. I have four of them uh, fastened from the front and behind the firearm. Uh, one in the back, and the purpose of those is uh, while you're moving, it keeps that belt, those two belts from separating the outer belt that has weight on it from moving around your body, either shifting side to side or moving up uh, or down further, just holds everything in place because it does have. They won't show it. They're showing the jury. All, the, all your equipment. Would be trouble to uh, unbutton the keeper. So they just they just snap off like that. Um, most keepers are, are the same way. Some will only have one button. Most have two buttons. Uh, snaps. They just, they just be, you know, They're not showing us because they don't want to show the jury, obviously. Belt, there we go. Flip it over and this is a good angle. Place the holes. It holds those two belts together. Okay. Uh, minimum we're required to wear uh, four keepers by our uniform standards. Uh, some guys will wear more. Okay. Uh, four or five. Maybe even six. Thank you, sir. For the amount that weight. Thank you. Thanks, Jinxie. Now, uh, can you define what the, the word muster means? Uh, so muster for us in the Border Patrol would be uh, uh, a gathering we have, I guess, at, at the beginning of every shift. Um, we report to our duty station. Uh, we gather in the, in the muster room uh, that's designated at the station. Um, everybody who's working that shift for that day, supervisors, uh, watch commander, uh, regular agents, uh, we all gather there. Roll is called. Assignments are given out. Um, any information about, uh, you know, patrol information from the day before, what, you know, things things to expect that day, uh, things that might be going on in the community, uh, information like that, significant arrests, uh, all that information is given out. Um, after muster, everybody gets, after they get their work assignments, you go get your vehicle assignments, any equipment you want to check out from the station, and then we, we leave the station and go report to our areas, assigned areas of duty for the day. Great. Another term that... Uh, I want you to explain is kilo unit. Kilo unit. So a kilo unit in the Border Patrol is is a, a pickup truck. Uh, could be a Ford, could be a Chevy, could be a Dodge, but uh, it's a, that's the uh, part of the number designator for a a, uh, a pickup truck in the Border Patrol. Usually it'll start with kilo, and then after that, it has a, an assigned number for the individual pickup truck. 
Uh, when you say it starts with kilo, is that the letter K? Or the letter K, K, yes, sir. Okay. Letter it's not K. the word kilo. It's no, K. no, it's the letter K, and then uh, either four or five numbers will follow that. Okay. Okay. Uh, what about boots? What kind of, are you guys uh, issued boots, or what, what type of boots do you all use? So we're not, we're not issued and required to wear a specific um, brand or, or model of boot. Uh, the way our uniforms uh, work, we have a, a uniform allowance that we're issued every year. Every agent is given uh, the same amount, a certain dollar amount um, that we can spend through our, our uniform company that has the contract to provide our uniforms. Um, on their, that, that website through that company, there are certain models that we can purchase, certain uh, makes manufacturers. Uh, but we're not required to wear only those. Uh, we're restricted by, uh, you know, color, material, uh, things of that nature. Uh, as long as our boots meet those requirements, we can go outside of those uniform, uh, that uniform ordering website. But we have to spend our own money. If we're going to use the uniform allowance, um, most agents will, will buy from those, those uh, boots that are available to them on, on the website there. Okay. And as far as the, uh, the green uniform that you wear today, is that issue? That, that is also available on that, that site, and that is required. We can't go outside of, of that uh, provider to, to provide our, our actual uniforms. Um, the only thing we can go outside for is uh, belts or nylon gear and boots. Everything else pretty much has to come through that, that uniform provider. What about knives, folding knives, uh, utility knives? You guys uh, carry that on your own, or is it issued? No, that's not issued. Uh, most agents carry one, uh, a knife of some type. Uh, but we, well, that's up to us to provide on our own. Okay, thank you. Uh, what about your, what the, are the primary duties and responsibilities of a Border Patrol agent like yourself? Um, as far as like our mission statement or just yes. what we do on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, I um, mean your mission statement and then what, what you do day-to-day. -day. So so day-to-day, -day, uh, an average day for, for uh, a Red North agent on, on the shift, on the line, um, we have multiple yes. duties that we, that we cover. Uh, obviously, the checkpoint, uh, most people are familiar with our checkpoint that we run up on IH-35. Um, and then main, mainly, um, other than some support roles, it's going to be to patrol uh, the river areas of, uh, of Laredo, uh, also the highway areas, the ranches north of town, um, to, to, circum or, I'm sorry, to uh, detect uh, any kind of illegal entry into the country, whether it's um, terrorist, terrorist weapons, illegal aliens, uh, other any other kind of contraband uh, that's primarily what we do on a day-to-day -day basis thank okay. you Denise now uh, I want to direct your attention to April the 9th of 2018 oh. do you recall that day yes sir I do okay were you on duty that day yes sir I was okay uh, let's start off in the morning okay uh, did you report on that morning yes sir okay. uh, to the day shift uh, I reported at 6 a.m. that morning okay and uh, tell us where you reported uh, and um, uh, how you reported and what you did. I hope morning. so, Rotan. Um, so like I mentioned, we, we start off uh, with muster uh, in the morning. Um, so I, I reported at, at 6 a.m. is when what our start time is for the day shift. Mm -hmm. So I reported to my station. Uh, we had muster 6 a.m. Uh, received my uh, work assignment for the day, which for that day I was working uh, the area from the Father Magnabo Park uh, up to the World Trade Bridge. Uh, that was my designated assigned area to patrol for that day. Um, so after, after muster, like I said, re retrieved my vehicle keys, equipment I was going to use for that day from the uh, armory at the station, uh, went out and went to my area of patrol. Wh and when you say you reported to work that day, where is that station? Uh, so that is on McPherson uh, Road, north of Loop 20. Um, just, I guess it's two blocks north of of Loop 20. The address is 1111 McPherson. It's it's north of the loop there. Okay. Loretta uh, Moore Station. And so you're talking about uh, where you were assigned that day, correct? You said between Father Macabo Park all the way out to to the World Trade Bridge. World Trade Bridge. More or less for the jury, if you can orient us to how how many miles that is. Um, it's probably <laughs> I would say a stretch of about a mile, um, okay. more or less from. I've never measured it specifically, but it's probably about a mile from from the park up to the World Thank Trade Bridge. Okay. Possibly a mile and a half, but probably about a mile. Let's go to the. Oh, 
You may step down, sir. They're doing some map time. Me too. <coughs> World Trade Center. What? Yeah, there we go. This is now State's Exhibit 102. Three miles. Let me show you, like, let me show you here quick. Huh? So here's the park. Here's the bridge. Where it is that your area that you were covering that day show that. It would be from here so to right here. Day, this is the World Trade Bridge here. You can see crossing. This is Mexican side of the river, United States. Uh, so this is the World Trade Bridge. My area would have gone from, from that bridge all the way down here. This is where the park begins. So the fields are here, uh, baseball field here. So pretty much right here at the, the edge of the baseball field uh, is what we've always considered the, the starting part. Uh, now it's a little more developed. Uh, this looks like a map in more than that time. Uh, but it's pretty much from the end of um, Quail Creek on down. Okay. Pretty good. Do you know how many agents that we can have a seat? Uh, you know uh, how many agents Thank you, were assigned that day to that <coughs> region? So the specific area that I was assigned to, it was only me, sir. Okay. Uh, do you know an agent by the name of Maximo Lugo? I do, sir, yes. Do you know where he was assigned on that day? So he was assigned the, the next area downriver of me, south of me, uh, which that area encompasses uh, Fletcher Lane. From Fletcher Lane up to the start of the park there. Okay, so it would have been uh, uh, adjacent or contiguous to to you. It would have been correct, near. sir. Yes. So you all would have been in areas yeah. that hope touch each other. Yes, sir. Um, Grizzly time. <laughs> do you know uh, Agent Ronald Anthony Burgos Aviles? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, and if you can, do you see him in the courtroom? Today? Yeah, look at him. Yes, sir, I do. Okay. And can you identify uh, an article of clothing he's wearing or where he's sitting? Uh, yes, sir. He's you? wearing a looks like a light blue shirt, blue tie, sitting at the at the table over there. Okay. Mm -hmm. The record reflect that Agent Dennison has uh, identified mm -hmm. Ronald Anthony. Yeah, Douglas he's Douglas. right there. That's okay. him. <laughs> uh, how do you know him? Uh, so he was assigned uh, as my supervisor for that day, um, and he was the supervisor for uh, the deployment areas uh, that day. So he would he would have been in charge or, or overseeing all of our deployment zones for that day that day, which would have been a, a number of agents. So when you say a number of agents, would it be uh, three, four, five? How many? Um, specifically, I, I don't know without having the, the daily schedule in front of me, but it probably would have been anywhere between uh, five to ten agents. I, I would imagine. And he would okay. have been the supervisor. Correct. Yes. Okay. Um, do you do you know if uh, agent uh, or that Mr. Bugles Aguilas was dressed in his uniform that day? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, he, he was at the muster that I attended that morning, and at that time he was oh, he looks definitely at him. In, in his uniform, yes. Yeah. So he was, he was present uh, during the, the muster? Yes. Okay. Thanks, Julian. And what about Agent Lugo? Was he out um, in, in that zone that you described? Was he going to go out to that zone? So he, he was at the at muster as well, um, and he was uh, at that time also uh, assigned some collateral duties aside from his normal patrol duties. Oh. Um, he was assigned to do a station inventory or one of the station inventory takers. So pretty much annually we have a, a inventory of all of our gear or equipment that's assigned to us, uh, be that radios, flashlights, uh, GPS's, things of that nature, phones, laptops, anything that's government issued equipment um, that is on a property card that's assigned to an agent, we have to bring it in and they check show numbers on it, make sure everything's accounted for uh, once a year at that time. So he was part of that that group of agents that were signed collateral duty of, of taking inventory. So that morning, um, and, it, and usually it, it stretches a, a period of you know a month or so uh, that everybody to get, make sure everybody has a chance to bring in their stuff. Uh, so that morning it, it had been put out uh, at muster uh, that Agent Lugo uh, was going to be there, be available at the station uh, all morning long to be able to, to take 
inventory of your equipment. So if you had your equipment with you that morning, or if you were available to, to go pick it up, you had it in your locker, vehicle, whatever, he was gonna be there available uh, to bring your equipment so that he wasn't, wasn't gonna be in his area, he'd be there at the, at the station uh, available to do that inventory. Did, did he have the same similar uh, position as, as agent uh, Burgos Aviles? Was he also a supervisor level? N no, sir, he was not. No, he was uh, So instead of being out in the field, agent. he was going to be back at the station? Correct, sir. And all of you knew this? Correct, sir. That, that was, it was announced to everyone at muster that morning. Okay. Uh, so that morning, do you, do you make it out to your designated area? Yes, sir. And that's uh, Father Magdebo Park? <clears throat> Correct. Is that in Webb County? Yes, sir. And uh, what type of vehicle were you in? Uh, I was driving a Ford F-150, a, a kilo unit. You remember the number of that kilo unit? Uh, kilo 45153. Wow. 45153. Yes, sir. That was your unit? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, do you remember driving by the uh, the park on that morning? Uh, yes, sir. I did I did have occasion to go in the park that morning. Uh, um, patrolling? Patrolling, yes. Right? Of course. Looking for any sort of illegal activity? Correct, sir. Okay. Do you remember seeing any vehicles uh, in the park uh, that morning? Uh, so, yes. Uh, one vehicle that... that drew my attention that morning uh, as I was entering the park yes. uh, from I had gone from the top end of my area uh, down river uh, entered, entered the park and as I was passing through the park uh, would you like me to show on the map more or less sure, the location yes, that maybe give them more uh, I'm going to ask you this is already been also it's map time again uh, <laughs> map time take two so as I pass through the park, thank uh, you. Through here, through this center parking lot, it has a, a bunch of parking spaces that are lined this way. Yes, yes. As I pass through here, uh, more or less where this vehicle is, I noticed a, uh, a white car. Uh, there was a Mercedes yes. uh, parked right here, and it caught my attention because it was. Instead of being parked in a normal parking space, it was parked like, across the spaces. Okay. If you're driving, you pulled over into your community spaces uh, temporarily. But there was really al almost no other vehicles in those parking spaces. It was mostly empty. Uh, so it was pulled out there across maybe two or three spaces. So it drew my attention. Uh, obviously, uh, I noticed there was a, a female uh, in the vehicle. Uh, didn't see anybody else in the vehicle. And she was, she was looking at her phone. I don't know if she was talking or texting, but she was paying attention to her phone. Shame, you uh, saw her. As I drove by. So we'll stop you there. Yes, sir. More or less, what time are we talking about? Uh, so this was shortly before 9 o'clock. Somewhere around the 9 o'clock area. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, can you mark for me uh, a spot? Yes, sir. 107. 107, did I withdraw it? Uh, That's 107, the one you have displayed now? 97, I'm sorry, 97. 97 has already been withdrawn. Okay, so, now you, so you can uh, mark on it. Okay. I'm just going to ask you to, from what you recall that morning, mark uh, that, uh, well, circle, a circle where that car would have been. Oh, they're drawing on the map. Okay. I'll put your initials uh, right above that. It's B for a right? So sometime around 9 a.m. you see a car here. Uh, and anything else? Any, anything unusual about that? So like I said, just the way she was parked, obviously she wasn't parked properly yet. So and it's attention. boosted, Solaris. Uh, you should go so check I, out the original I street. Go past her, uh, kind of circle over here. The sound is bad. Uh, back into a parking space over here in this corner. Uh, stayed there for just a short time. Uh, I had noticed uh, a Laredo PD unit over at the, the north end of the park. You know, several other uh, law, law enforcement vehicles that were coming into the park uh, that were, I could tell they were unmarked uh, K9, K9 units. Uh, that sometimes they go there to train in the park, exercise the canines, things like that. So let me ask you, why, why so much law enforcement presence here? Border Patrol, police, uh, I mean, why, what's the importance of, the, of your all's presence around here? So I can't really speak to the, the police, but for the Border Patrol, uh, 
for sure it's it's historically been a very high traffic area because uh, as you can see uh, very close proximity to the river uh, you can get vehicles easily into the river uh, sorry not into the river it's close close to the river uh, so it's a very short uh, trip or run uh, for smugglers so no wonder he lured her away run up from the riverbanks get into a vehicle and, and get lost into that neighborhood uh, versus Dude, some other locations that are further off off the river you don't have as, as easy access whereas the park the is very cameras easy, in close the park. access to get a vehicle to the river so it's sort of been a very high traffic very close what if anything do you do after you you leave this location so after i was at the location for a short time i noticed all the other law enforcement vehicles coming in so uh, in my mind i kind of said well nothing's going to happen here right now with all these vehicles here they're not going to try to cross or smuggle anything so let me go back to the other other end of my area so as i started to leave uh, i noticed her uh, coming driving back this way uh, looked like the same female driver same vehicle um, driving back through this middle section right here, we, we passed each other on this little little drive right here. Uh, and, then, and again, and as I passed her, she was uh, she was on her phone. Uh, it looked like she was talking at that time. Okay. On her phone, she had it, had it held up. Uh, it didn't really notice anything else out of place other than uh, she was just on the phone. But to me, it looked like she was possibly going to meet somebody there because we often see that uh, multiple cars will show up, groups of people will meet up and walk and exercise in the park, whatever, and then they all get back to separate cars. So it looked to me like she was trying to coordinate with whoever she was meeting at the meet there in the park. So I, I, I proceeded out this way. I saw her come into the parking lot here, and I left the parking lot. I left the park, went up through here. Uh, like I said, went up to, towards the northern end of my, my patrol uh, zone over there. Uh, so just real quick, so your last visual of her is entering this block? Correct. And the pandemic, Liz. You want to put an arrow here where you your last visual of her? Sure. I know, right? Angel, they can't. So where do you go after that? Uh, what do you do after that? So after that, uh, as I mentioned, I drove up uh, more than towards the, the northern end of, of my uh, patrol area. I believe there had been some sensor activations that had gone off there um, as well uh, while I was in, in the park. So I, I was going up to check and respond to those. Uh, while I was on the way there, uh, another agent uh, actually had uh, had acknowledged and, and cleared those out as as being uh, you know not, not good traffic. Uh, some machinery, I believe, had set them off. Uh, so I just went back up into my area, uh, stayed patrol that area for for a while. Um, nothing really uh, eventful happened um, until later in the shift. Okay, so in other words, you didn't make any arrests that morning, Agent Dennison. No, sir, I did not. Okay. Are you familiar with uh, the term Cariso clearing? Yes, sir. Was there any Cariso clearing going on that day? Um, so that, that specific day? Or um, that, during that time, that week? Okay, during, yeah, during previous to that day, prior to that day, um, for about a week or two, there had been a, a Cariso clearing project uh, going on, maybe perhaps even for a longer amount of time, but definitely for at least the, the two weeks prior um, to that, they had been clearing Cariso from the north end of the park all the way down uh, towards Fletcher Lane and, and south of uh, Fletcher down river of Fletcher Lane towards the uh, Manatus Creek that's down there and when you say Cariso clearing explain what that is to the jury so so people come in uh, a contract company comes in with with heavier equipment and uh, they clear out the the large areas of Cariso that, that uh, on the riverbanks that make it difficult for us to see or detect illegal entries so they, they come in with heavy equipment uh, brush cutters, tractors, uh, things of that nature, and they they clear all that equipment down to to just the bare ground, pretty much. Um, so you can you can easily see and detect anything coming through there. You can walk through, um, interdict any kind of uh, illegal entries going on there. Did that area include the, the uh, brushy area or the bank area exactly. south of the soccer field, the Cariso clearing project? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It did. Uh, like I said, it, it went from the north end of the park the whole length of the park and all the way south towards uh, Manatus Creek. Okay. I, mean, I hate to bother you again, but sure. uh, Oh, yeah, what are you saying now behind the paper? The park the so the Thanks, park Doodle Mom. Would be like the south end of the park back here, 
um, all the way up to the north end of the park, which will be up here. There's a large creek that runs through here, and it's the end of all the athletic fields. So the clearing project that was going on uh, was from here, the upper side of the park, um, all the way down uh, past the downriver side of the park, all the way pretty much past the, this map. So, so it would encompass this brushy area south of the soccer field? Along the riverbanks. Yeah, around yes. the riverbanks. Yes. Okay. Yeah, they weren't clearing up in here, but they were up in here, but they were clearing on the riverbanks along the riverbanks. And, and typically what will, what will happen with any of the technology you may have here uh, if Carrizo clearing is going on? I'm talking about pole cameras, things. Yeah, so, so any, any technology sensors and stuff that we have in those locations that at that time uh, had to be removed because the equipment they use, uh, we're using to clear all that, uh, either could possibly damage uh, those sensors or uh, they would just repeatedly set them off and run battery now, you know, they would just keep getting alerts on them. So that, that stuff was removed uh, while that clearing was being done. And replaced. that information, you, you agents are aware that that technology has been removed? Yes, that had been made, made aware to us uh, before the project started that during the, the, for the duration of this, this clearing project, all of those sensors will be removed from that area. Uh, like I said, mostly just to prevent damage, to the loss of any of those, and then we get back after. To my knowledge, they were, the project was still ongoing, so the, those have not been placed back yet. Uh, so that is, this is hectic from the prosecution. <laughs> all the sensors were removed in the area because of the clearing. Oh, my word. So I want to fast forward a little bit now to later on uh, that morning. Wow. Uh, do you receive any calls or w what happens if anything? Um, so later that, later that morning, um, I would say uh, right around 11 a.m., uh, a call went out over, over the radio um, of a report of a suspicious individual up by the uh, pilot truck stop uh, near the 13 mile marker. 13 mile marker on on IH 35 on IH 35 yes sir so you're you're now near the river banks and you get a call of suspicious activity 13 miles north on 35 at the 13 mile marker 13 yes sir mile north. Okay. okay so what do you do? so that so that went out on the radio um, a supervisor from my station uh, called me over the radio uh, let me know that they wanted me to go respond and, and check on that suspicious individual uh, that they that was reported to be possibly an illegal alien. So as I started to leave uh, my area, I was wow. I was parked on a on a bluff near the uh, World Trade Bridge. So as I went to leave that area, yeah, uh, as I was leaving, I saw a, another kilo unit uh, similar to mine. It was a, also a Ford F-150 uh, coming into the area, on, traveling on a different road from where I was, but I, I had visual of that road. I could see it. Uh, traveling at a, at a pretty high rate of speed for that road. That road had a lot of uh, washouts, ruts. It was very uneven. Mm -hmm. It was made of rock and dirt. Uh, you know, it was nothing paved. Uh, I was traveling at, at what I considered a, a very high rate of speed uh, in my experience for that road. Uh, typically, I've, I would only travel on that road or I've only seen other agents travel on that road at that high rate of a speed if, if they have a reason to or need to, whether they're responding to some type of illegal entry, uh, some type of emergency situation, somebody's asking for help. Mm -hmm. uh, something of that nature, not just a, wow. uh, as a casual drive down that road. So when I saw this vehicle uh, driving at such a high rate of speed, uh, I decided to, to follow up, uh, make sure that that agent didn't need some help with uh, whatever it is that they were doing, because to me it indicated that they had something going on, uh, more than just a casual drive down the road, like I said. I'm going to stop you. Only sure. The gap is, this is important. And, and this is so important. Is that road on this map? Map time again. This other agent So, just if you could first point, uh, just get everyone oriented here. Uh, so, where you saw this vehicle? Full train bridge. Uh, I, uh, I was right here uh, near this intersection. Uh, I had been parked right here. Uh, that little kind of circle you see there is a wider dirt spot. Uh, <laughs> I, I, been, see. I was traveling right here and stopped for a moment, and I saw the vehicle coming in on this road. Uh, it's at a very high rate of speed. It goes downhill. It's very rough. Uh, a lot of potholes and 
drugs and stuff. Okay, draw me an arrow where you see this vehicle. What kind of vehicle is this? Uh, it was a Kilo unit, a uh, Ford F-150. Okay, put your initials right there. More or less what time are we talking about? Uh, so right then it was probably around 11.05ish, just a, just a couple minutes after 11. Because uh, like I said, that, that call had come in around 11 o'clock. And then they had, uh, a few minutes went by, they called and told me to respond to it. So, so you're around 11 05 ish. So you're heading out. 11, you're heading out, and this kilo unit's heading in. Correct. Yes. Okay, and, and that's off day. He went what home if anything to happens, shower and change. Uh, the jury. Then rush back to the scene. So that kilo unit continued down the road here, uh, raising a pretty large cloud of dust. It was pretty dry. Um, so I decided to go see uh, what that was all about before I went to respond to that, that uh, call out at the pilot. Um, so as you can see, the road goes underneath the bridge over here. It goes over here and kind of new turns around, and that's as far as you could drive. There was a, an older road right here, but there's a creek uh, pretty much right on the edge of the map right here where that edge of the map would be uh, that you couldn't, you couldn't pass through the vehicle at the time. Uh, so I knew this guy. Uh, that can, he wasn't going to go very far uh, until he got a to the right he was responding to whatever he was doing. So uh, without see. getting on the radio to call him, I just, I just decided let me, let me follow him, help him out if he needs it. So I proceeded down the road. I could see that his dust trail continued this direction down the road. Uh, it didn't turn here. So I just kept following down the road. Do you go under the bridge? I did go underneath the bridge, yes, sir. Uh, as, I, as I got underneath the bridge, I was able to see uh, the kilo unit coming back on this road right here, the one that's closest to the river, uh, coming back towards me, uh, driving again at a, at a pretty high rate of speed, making a large dust cloud uh, coming up behind him. So I decided uh, I'll just stop and wait here for him to, to get to me. Uh, and then what he's got going on. Okay, so the, that kilo unit, you guys come window to window? Yes, sir. Door to door? Yes, sir. So I stopped there, waited for him to approach. Uh, <laughs> as he got to my location, I went ahead and rolled my window oh. down. Uh, he also put his window down. I'll show down, you after properly. Uh, and, we spoke. and who's driving that kilo unit? Uh, that was Supervisor Burgos was driving. <laughs> what is the same Ronald Anthony Burgos Aguilas is sitting here today. Defense right. attorney. Okay. And in your exact words, what do you what do you tell Agent Bugles? So my, my exact words were. Okay, we're map. Are we gonna go back to the map for you? Uh, I don't know if you need the agent down there for the map, or you're gonna continue with the map for donation. Yes, just All right. one, one. So your exact words too. So <coughs> so I spoke to him. I said, Hey, what, what's going on? Uh, you have the traffic, or what, what's going on? He said, No, I'm, I'm just exploring. I said, well, you, you were hauling ass down the road, man. I thought you had just exploring. something going on. You responded to something. And he said, no, no, I'm just exploring the area. I said, okay. I said, I said, well, since he's my supervisor for the area, and I hadn't had contact with him since after muster that morning. Uh, I said, hey, I don't know if you heard it on the radio right now. They, they just called me to go respond to that pilot. Uh, they call out at the pilot. And he said, no, no, I, I didn't hear that. I said, okay, I'm going to take off up there, so I'll be out of the area for a little while. And... Uh, he just responded to me, uh, okay, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going this way, and I'm just going to keep exploring. Okay. And then he rolled his window up and, and proceeded uh, Cameras. south. Proceed down here. Can, can you show us, just to finish off here, sure. uh, you see him here under the yes. bridge, and he proceeds which way? Right here in the bridge. So I don't have any of the dogs, uh, Michelle. Down the road here. I don't uh, have them. Back this direction. And, uh, I'm looking for them. Road. And I'm going to order them later on the so menu. I, I turned around, uh, proceeded out this way, uh, and then south the road towards uh, towards Fast. Okay. So he told him, I'm just exploring. Yeah, Meanwhile, he's racing back to the scene, the murder scene, because he went home to shower and change. We'll go over that again if you didn't miss it. If you missed it, don't worry. Ooh, this was this was the word, uh, what a great witness. How did, what did you think about that word? Any yeah, impressions? just exploring. So yeah, at the at the time that I spoke with him, when he he used that word uh, multiple times, exploring, uh, it, it struck me as an odd word to use. Um, Why? Well, because at at that time, um, Mr. Burgos had been an agent at at the same station at the Redondo Station for I believe about nine years. So he he had experience working. Uh, that area uh, of operations um, for many years, just as I did. So I, I really didn't s like. I never would have thought anybody to use the word exploring uh, for that. We On the, the only job. time you ever hear typically an agent use the word exploring would be if we're going to a brand new area we've never worked at, 
or if you've been gone for a long time, detailed to another station or another academy for a few years, and then you come back, well, you're going to explore and, and see what's changed, what's different. It, if, if you're going through a location that you've been through hundreds of times or more, exploring just seemed like a very odd choice of, of words uh, yeah, that for guy that. Looks at him. <laughs> so you told the jury that you received a call that you're going to respond to at the 13 mile marker. Did you go? Yes, sir. Okay, and uh, how long, or tell us uh, from there what, if anything, happened. So, so I proceeded uh, north of 13 mile marker. Uh, as I approached the and identified the individual that uh, was from the call out, uh, matched the description that, that the, our dispatcher had put out. Uh, I, as I approached him, uh, went to exit my vehicle. I heard a, a radio transmission on the on our radio uh, from Sup uh, Supervisor Burgos, uh, stating that uh, he had found a woman uh, who was injured uh, on the on the uh, near the river banks on, on one of the river roads there uh, near the end of Bristol. Uh, and he was asking for another agent that was also in the area to, uh, I guess he had he had seen the area another agent there to come. And help him, and he was asking for EMTs uh, for the lady because he said she was she was injured. And you injured more or less lady. remember around the time this happened? Uh, so that was that was more or less around uh, 20 minutes after 11 or so, because uh, like I said, it was around 11:05, 11:10 or so when I encountered uh, Mr. Burgos there near the bridge, and then uh, you know driving time to get up to the to the pilot there, uh, and like I said, as soon as I arrived there uh, around the 13 mile marker. Uh, it was when he put that over the radio, so it was, it was more or less around 11.20ish. Okay, so what do you do after you hear that call of him asking for, for other agents? So when I heard that call, um, like I said, I was, I was encountering this other individual. I uh, went ahead and immediately uh, conducted my immigration inspection with that individual, uh, which turned out to be he was a United States citizen. Um, <clears throat> as I went to leave, he asked me for a bottle of water. I tossed him a bottle of water real quick that I had in my ice chest. I uh, got back in my vehicle and proceeded uh, back south uh, towards towards Bristol to assist any way that I could. So you go back to, you, you make the, the location, you said you entered through where? Yes, sir. So I, I proceeded south on IH-35, uh, exited the Shiloh exit, uh, went down Las Cruces uh, to Mines Road. Uh, Mines Road is, is just a block up there to Bristol, turned north on, on Mines up to Bristol, went all the way to the end of Bristol. As I arrived at the end of Bristol, the, the gate that's there at the end that, that gives us access to the, the river areas, the, the dirt roads that are there was closed and locked. Um, so I exited my vehicle. As I was unlocking that lock, uh, I could hear uh, an ambulance. It was sounding to me like an ambulance coming up Bristol. Uh, so I, I opened up that gate, uh, brought my, my truck inside and waited for the ambulance to arrive. So they could either go through the open gate uh, or I could uh, take them if they didn't if they chose not to bring their ambulance because obviously it's a bigger heavier vehicle that's not maybe designed for off-road use. I'm going to uh, court permission again ask you to show where you entered the, the area where Go ahead. Where Google was asking for help. We can orient the uh, uh, jury. You so busted Bristol oh. Road. Yes, so this is Bristol right here. And then at the end right here there's a there's a gate. You mark an X where that gate is. We went to that gate on map time in the and first episode. Gate, you and yesterday. Yes, it is. Okay, so there's a gate there you have to keep. Yes, sir. We have a, a border patrol lock on there that, that all all agents from my station would have access. It's they have uh, access to that lock. Where do you go from there? So from there, uh, I pulled in there, stopped, like I said, I waited for the ambulance to arrive. Uh, the ambulance arrived. Uh, they went ahead and stopped right here on, on the end of the pavement. I'm trying to see. Uh, they got out of their vehicle, uh, and they began to approach my vehicle. They asked me, uh, hey, what, what's the condition uh, of the victim there? What's the condition of, of the lady? And uh, as I was driving south uh, on 35, I had heard uh, another agent get on the radio and say that they had checked her pulse and they couldn't find a pulse. So I let them know uh, they, they can't find a pulse on her, so she possibly is deceased. So at that moment, they went ahead and they turned around, they went back to their, their vehicle, they retrieved some other equipment. I don't know what the equipment was, but they retrieved some other equipment as well. Uh, and then they came on uh, back to my truck. So I, when I arrived at the gate, uh, while I was waiting for the ambulance, I got on, on my radio and I called one of the agents that was there on the scene already. Uh, and I said, hey, 
where are you guys at? Where do I go? Because all they had put out was the end of Bristol, the dirt road That's all I had heard yet. <clears throat> so uh, I didn't know, you know, they're going straight in, turning left, turning right, whatever. So I said, where do I go? And I go straight, left, right. So one of the agents said, hey, I'll, I'll come out and get you. So while I was waiting on the MTs, uh, another Borg Troy agent came out. I wish out. they had him on the uh, camera. On foot. That was Agent Herndon. Herndon. Uh, Borg Troy Agent Herndon, he, he came out on foot uh, up that road, uh, arrived at my vehicle at the same time that the EMTs were getting their equipment. So I thought, man, you, you drive my truck, me and the EMTs jump in the bed of my truck, and we proceeded down, down the road. Show us which way you went. So we went straight down this road right here, uh, made a left turn, and then we turned right here, we went on the river side of this little, little island of, of grass and brush that's here. And as we arrived here, uh, there was already a kilo unit parked, the way, parked there, and then okay, you heard that park right behind. But, uh, Hopefully he watches later. You saw that kilo unit. Let me try a black one. So that, that, that kilo's already there. Put your initials. So there's already a kilo unit there. Correct, sir. And an arrow where you came in. You came in. This one. Okay. Put your initials next to that. Okay. And uh, what do you do with what do you do with your vehicle? So Agent Herndon parked my vehicle directly behind that kilo unit. Okay, so put K2, kilo 2. So now you're at the at the scene. Correct. So uh, as you can have a seat. Trying to look at my map there as well. Sure. Okay. Hectic. Yes, Brenda is like really would love to see. Could that defense attorney? So let's talk about move. what you see <laughs> when you get off the back of your truck. So. As we arrived there, like I said, Agent, Agent Herman parked my vehicle directly behind the kilo unit that was already there, uh, which was Mr. Burgos's unit. They have not, Daniel. I went ahead and me and the EMTs all exited the back of the truck. Agent Herman also exited my truck. So as, as I got there, um, the EMTs uh, immediately approached uh, the female that was on the ground there. I saw her, she was uh, further down the road in, in front of the, the kilo unit that was already there. Uh, she was laying uh, across the road, kind of at an angle. Mm -hmm. uh, she was facing away from me and somewhat face down. Okay, um, hold on a yes, sir. He's not going to mark it, but can you show on 101 where he saw the thumbnail? Oh, no. Listen, defense attorney, someone on the defense, can you check your phone? Messy bun lady. Please check your phone. <laughs> Maybe they can't. I just mean. He's going to stand in front of the camera again. And, and maybe look to the back. This way, I know the jurors here on the side. Yes, quickly know, look. Yes. Now there's no mic. Uh, for the jury, what you saw. Okay. And you can get closer up to the mic. Thank you. So just for, for orientation, um, this is. The road that we came in from Bristol comes right here. And like I said, we made this left turn. This is the island that's in the middle. Uh, the first kilo unit would have been parked more or less right here. Uh, my kilo unit was parked right behind that. So as I exited the vehicle, uh, I saw a female's body uh, laying across the road, uh, more or less right around here. Uh, she was, like I said, she was facing away from me. Um, Somewhat face down, like she had her arm across and then this arm across like that. Um, so I couldn't, I was able to see her face, but I could, she was a female, she had long hair, uh, she had a lot of blood uh, around her hair, uh, back of her neck, back area uh, of her body. Uh, she also had a large blood spot on, the, on her, her right hip. Um, it's a pulling of blood right there near the hip. Um, I can see near her body also a lot of blood splatter uh, on the ground and the dirt there. Uh, Spatter, not splatter. Uh, and some pulling of blood there uh, around her body Sorry. In, uh, in the dirt. Uh, also behind, uh, like at the end of her feet, uh, behind there, there was, uh, so more or less right here, uh, there was a large rock. Um, maybe I'm like. Sorry, I'm sorry, 
I'm not a rock mic or something because uh, when you're speaking outward this way, it's very difficult. Actually, could this guy move though? Oh, this coming. guy right here. Thank that's you. Okay, so go ahead and speak. So speak. So but behind her, uh, and a little bit, I guess, up the river, up where her feet closer to me, from where her feet were, there was a large rock, um, maybe baseball, or softball size. Oh my gosh. Rock. That was that was covered in blood. Like the whole top of that rock was covered in blood. Oh my word! Uh, like I said, there was a large amount of pooling and splatter marks uh, in the dirt uh, around her body. Okay. Any other objects that you were noticing there near the body? It's rock. Uh, right at that moment, um, no. Uh, okay. the, the other agents? No. no. Exactly, Jesse would put. He probably put her in the road so he could explore and then discover her. Uh, wow. Apparently, this defense attorney's super fashionable glasses don't work well after all. Annette, he's the defense attorney that was talking to the bestie with his glasses down like that and looking at her. Oh, so annoying. Now what are we looking through? I found the spot they were showing on the map, by the way. So I'm going to show you what have already been admitted in the evidence, but uh, I'm going to show you these these photos uh, from that area that you just described. Uh, see if you recognize uh, one, one. Yes, of Amy Kay. Yes. Every witness is so good. Yes. Sir. Ooh, okay. What are you saying now, lady? Yeah, yeah. Shh. Whispering what? Uh, one, 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 fourteen. Yes, sir. Okay. 123. No, we're watching you. Yes, sir. Okay. 187. Yes, sir. 124. Yes, sir. 206. Yes, sir. 125. You know, yes, Becky, Becky G, I vote that splatter gets removed yes, entirely from the vocab. It's better. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Becky G. Uncle Google got it updated. Spatter for true okay. crime. Spatter. 128. Yes, sir. 129. Yes, sir. 132. Solaris. Yes, 133. We need a, a spatter. Yes, sir. 134. Yes, sir. 135. Yes, sir. 248. Yes, sir. 250. Yes, sir. And 251. Yes, sir. Okay. Janet, you need to become a member here on YouTube. <coughs> Patreon's completely separate. And the wrenches are only for my moderators. I'm going to show some graphic photos of what you saw. Yeah, I see little hand. Oh no, okay, they're showing graphic photos. Please don't show us. YouTube will be like, ah. I know we're true crimers. So you, you described seeing a female laying face down? Yes, sir. This camera angle.
show you 123 is when you're approaching. Is that what you see? That's correct, sir. Yes. Okay. I'll show you 187. One, uh, Dale Morton, yes, sir. do you think the defendant's going to suck his thumb or what? Was under her body? Correct. Oh, you said man. that you saw blood splatters? Spatter. Yes, sir. Blood spatter. Yes, sir, that would be it's consistent like with what I saw. Did you hear? I said spatter, and then what he's like spatter. Do, uh, at this point? Are we listening? What's, what's happening at this time? <clears throat> so at the, at the time I arrived there, uh, like I said, it kind of took me a, a minute to take it all in. Uh, the EMTs uh, approached uh, the female, uh, began to use some of their equipment to attach to her. Um, so I, I observed how she was laying, the surroundings. Um, I observed the other agents that were there. Um, all of the other agents that were there on the scene, uh, except for one, were kind of over and hanging out near that, that little uh, grassy island that, you could, that I pointed out on the map there near the trucks uh, off to, to the left. And then one agent, uh, Supervisor Burgos, I could see him on the other side of uh, the female's body, uh, and he was pacing back and forth uh, up and down the road there. Oh. Uh, looked like he was just looking down at the road, uh, looking at the area. Uh, okay, let me ask you about this. You've got how many agents standing by the island? So it would be three other agents and myself. Okay, and you say Burgos has passed the body? Correct. On the, on the trail? Yes, on the dirt road there where there's blood spattered. Yes, sir. <laughs> it almost sounds like he heard what are your impressions me. impressions about spatter. what seen or what's going on? So when I, when I saw him down there, um, walking up and down, back and forth, uh, my, my initial thought was, well, he shouldn't be down there possibly contaminating the, the crime scene. Uh, oh my gosh, exactly. But then my, as, I, as I thought about it, I said, well, he's, he's only one agent down there. He's leaving one set of footprints. Um, he should know not to step on any other footprints mm -hmm. uh, that he might see there uh, to contaminate things. Um, so he, his his shoe print footprint should be able to be excluded from any uh, footprints of the any other victims or the perpetrator of it. So at yeah, the moment, my initial stop, okay. Stop you there. You Go ahead. The Is he wearing the boots at that time? Uh, yes, he was wearing uh, some black boots. Yes, sir. Do you see any prints here that resemble? Uh, yes, sir. Can you come down to the court a little bit? Sure. Make it bigger. Go ahead. Uh, thank you. Paula, I also yeah. suspect he threw the knife in the river. Right. A little bit louder on the speaking. Maybe than someone, on the maybe someone right can go magnet uh, fishing. These blueprints that you can see in, in the dirt right here, <clears throat> those, will be, those will match the boots that I observed him wearing that day. Those are a, a rocky boot that's one of those boots that I said is, is available on our, our uniform website to order um, that a lot of agents wear. Those are the oh, yeah. the footprint, the foot sign that is left by those particular boots that, that make and model brand the match the system of those. Did you notice any other tracks that were out there as far as the vehicle tracks. Uh, Tire box, yeah. See some other footprint there, but it's, it's not really like Nope, they never found them. They never I'll found show the you knife. 117. So what I'm able to see here um, was that as I was there observing the scene and looking at the other agents that were there, I was able to see uh, some lines that were in the dirt um, that I discussed with the other agents that were there. Uh, at that initial moment, we weren't sure what they were yet. Um, later, we discovered what they were, but there would be these straight lines right here, uh, which were consistent with a with a stroller um, that was discovered there. That's right. um, it looks like it was stopped here and turned sideways. Also, in here, I mean this uh, right here towards the bottom, uh, you see 
uh, these same footprints that are right here, these marks are also consistent with uh, those same boots that Agent Burgos was wearing. So right here, if you see at the tip of where my finger is, uh, there's another uh, footprint right there um, that is not consistent with the boots he was wearing. It uh, looks, to me, I would identify that. Uh, in my experience uh, with tracking individuals uh, throughout my career, um, I sometimes a tennis shoe, running shoe, uh, cross trainer type uh, athletic shoe, mm -hmm. uh, which none of the agents that were there, they would have been wearing. Show, show him again where you see that tiny shoe uh, yeah. mm -hmm. He did, Heather, he did do that. He yeah, picked up the woman's body by the feet and shoulders before placing it back down. This is harder than it looks. Right there at the tip of the pin. Right there. You can see the squares and the uh, Welcome, Michael. part of the heel right there. Um, that would be consistent with the shoe I just described. And that tennis shoe is around the same lines of a wagon or stroller or something? Yes. So it, right here, uh, right up here, you see the, the lines of the wagon. But she was wearing tennis shoes. Uh, you know, the I'm fight sorry, was so stroller. hectic, she lost her uh, shoes. Shame. Right here where it stopped, turned sideways, and then right beneath that uh, are the, the tracks from that, that tennis shoe. And that is exhibit oh, 117. The, the judge is rocket. <laughs> and then on the tire track marks, that was 206. On the first footprints that he identified Bugos' boots, that's 118. Okay. I don't know if he changed into his tennies. After you uh, see in the car, Bugos you know? walking, is he walking towards you, away from you on that trail? So when I first arrived, he was he was just walking up and down, back and forth, uh, both towards me and then turn around away. Uh, he went back and forth maybe about three times, um, and then he proceeded back towards me. Uh, as the EMTs were were working on the on the uh, female, uh, past them, uh, as he proceeded past me, um, he sort of scuffed his. I'm sorry, not past me, uh, towards me, uh, past the female's body. Um, he scuffed his feet a few times, and then uh, he made contact with that, that large rock uh, that I mentioned that was covered in blood. Uh, he caused that to, to roll uh, uh, maybe a foot or two uh, down the road, uh, disturbed that quite a bit. Wow. <clears throat> and then he proceeded past me, uh, back to or, or past that point, back towards me, towards the truck uh, where I was at. Um, he just went to, to the front of his truck there near the, near the driver's side door, and he just stayed right there uh, in that area uh, for that moment. Yes, sir. Can you uh, demonstrate, or you can come down here and demonstrate what you mean? Uh, <laughs> Trey says, who the calls them tennies in court? Now, what I'm ask you to do is uh, walking that way, demonstrate what you see Burgos doing. So as, as he's walking down the road, he just kind of, instead of picking up his feet as you normally would, he just kind of drags them a little bit. I'm not disturbing all the tracks. Very, very disturbance more than you would. She lost her shoe in the attack, is what they said in opening statements. I do know that as well, Phantom. Yeah. I'll see where you go. Thank you. Now, when he's coming back towards you, uh, you say he also uh, kicks that. He literally, literally kicks, kicks the, rock. the rock with his feet. Yes, sir. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't hold back and kick it like he's kicking a soccer ball or football or something, but yeah, he definitely, like you said, scuffs his feet, disturbs that rock, kicks it, moves it, you know, a foot or two down the road, causes it to roll. Wow. <clears throat> and that rock in relation to where the body was? So it was uh, a little bit closer to the trucks and kind of behind her feet uh, on the road there. Okay. It was within a couple of feet of, of her of her feet there. This is exhibit 123. 
Thank you. Are you able to identify that or see that rock that you were describing? <laughs> Heather, kick rock. Hopefully it'll be kicking mm. bucket soon. Sorry, not. I do wonder. They must have searched. I know there were boats. I'm going to show you on 257 the river. exhibit 257. Yes, sir. So it should be that that rock that's marked right here with the with the number two. Oh my word! Um, there it is. There it is. Right there. That that is the rock that he kicked and moved. Yes, sir. Hmm. Shame. This guy. He's having to relive all so of this. Uh, did you see any other rocks with with blood on them, or did you go past the body yourself? Uh, at that time, no. Okay. Later, yes. Okay. So further down the trail, um, had you recognized this rock with blood or not? Uh, no, sir. Okay. But is that consistent with blood spatter? Yes, sir. Okay. So after uh, he, he walks around the body, disturbs that rock, what, what else do you see him do? <clears throat> so he, he comes back to the truck, uh, like I said, to his, his vehicle. He stopped there. Mm -hmm. um, so as I was there looking, observing the scene, I, uh, I I started thinking about everything that I had seen or heard up to that point. And as I was traveling to uh, the end of Bristol there, um, I had heard several people on the radio. Uh, and somebody had made, the, made mention of uh, they believed... Uh, she may have been uh, attacked uh, on the riverbanks or possibly on the Mexican side of the river, and it looked like maybe this was, you know, she was trying to get to some help, and this is as far as she made it. Mm -hmm. So based on the way that she was laying across the road, there was some blood splatter coming, uh, you know, kind of from the direction spatter. that she was laid there. I said, well, let me, let me check towards the river and see if may maybe that is true. Maybe I can find a blood trail where she came from. Uh, maybe there's other victims. Possibly the perpetrator that, that did this is still in that area near the riverbanks. Uh, so, let me stop you there. Yes, sir. Are you armed at this time? Yes, sir. So, how, how are you armed? So at that time, I, I was armed. I was dressed in the same uniform right now, armed with a sidearm. Uh, I also retrieved uh, my rifle from my vehicle. I had a, a service issued in for a rifle. <clears throat> retrieved that, uh, and I went to Agent Burgos and I let him know, hey, I'm going to go check this brushy area towards the river. If you can step down here and show the jury your steps, where you went looking around, what you did on, while you were... Okay, so as, as we mentioned, truck one, truck two right here, body was here, this is for orientation. So I left my truck, I went to Mr. Burgos, I said, I'm going to go get in the grass here, I'm going to check towards the river, uh, try not to disturb anything if I find anything of an entry, and look for any other, any other possible victims. Uh, perpetrator anything where she where she came from. So where's the river here? River is down here. Okay. So this is actually part of the clearing area where they cleared Cariso up. You can see it's kind of clear. So I went into the grass right here near the trucks, near the front of the, of the trucks. I decided because she was laying at an angle this way, I'm gonna search from from more or less where she's at back this direction. Because it just looked that glance, that that's where the direction she was traveling uh, when she, she stopped there. So I went into the, into the grassy area there, right off the edge of the road, uh, started searching, uh, kind of zigzagging back and forth, looking for any kind of blood trail coming from that uh, that direction, any kind of disturbance in the grass, any fresh grass trail anything laid down that indicate that her or anybody else had traveled from the river. Down. Did you find anything? I did not, sir. I went all the way to the riverbanks uh, and did not find anything uh, in that direction. So I came back to my vehicle. Uh, I let Mr. Burgos know I hadn't seen, seen anything uh, of interest over there that, that would indicate uh, anything. So I put my rifle back in my vehicle, uh, waited a short time longer. At that time, uh, there had been a couple of uh, uniformed PD officers, and I believe uh, one or two detectives had showed up at the scene as well. Um, the EMTs were leaving. Uh, they had already disconnected the equipment from her. Uh, I heard them make mention that they believe she was she had been deceased for probably about two hours at that point. So I, as they left, I asked them. I noticed that she didn't have shoes on uh, on her feet. So I asked them, "Hey, did, did you guys take her shoes off?" And there was a, there was a shoe laying on the ground next to her. I said, "Did you guys take her shoes off?" 
And they said, no, no, we, we didn't take her shoes off. They were already, she was already barefoot. Uh, but we did cut the back of her pants. They cut the back of her pants open to attach whatever equipment they attached to her, to her legs there. Um, but other, other than that, they, they said they did not disturb the body. Other than cutting the back of her pants, uh, they did not disturb the back of her body. Uh, I'm sorry, disturb her body. It's not correct for true crime, though. It's Where spent her. Where do you go now on this, on this uh, map that you've seen? So after the keys left, uh, I stayed there thinking for a moment. I said, well, just because she's angled that way, doesn't mean she necessarily came from that way, so let me search. Do the same thing I did, uh, just to roll out any other possible victims that might need help over here, uh, make sure that this area is safe for us to be uh, working in, EMPs, everybody else to come into. So I decided to search from her body. I'd already searched from her body back this direction. So well, let me start at her body and go this direction now forward. Uh, so I went back into the grass again. I let Agent Burgos know what I was doing. Uh, I went back into the grass again, stayed off the road so I wouldn't contaminate anything. Uh, went back into the grass and started proceeding uh, down the road looking for any indication of grass trails, blood trails, uh, any indication that anybody had come from the riverbank toward Now speaking about grass around this area, do you notice anything unusual about anywhere in the grass? Yes, sir. So as I proceeded uh, further down, down the trail here, uh, along, along off the edge into, into the grass, uh, I got up to more or less this, this location here. Hadn't seen anything yet. Um, and then I noticed a, a large area of grass, maybe about four or five feet uh, in diameter, uh, that was all smashed and matted down right off the edge of the road. Um, like maybe a foot off the road right there, maybe two feet off the road, a large area of grass uh, that was smashed and matted down. That looked like someone had either sat there, squat there, uh, knelt down there. Uh, they had spent some time right there. Uh, it wasn't somebody walking through. Interesting. Uh, now, you know, Talk about your, your training and years of looking for sign okay. or cutting. Explain to them what, what that is. So at this point in time, I, I have been in Border Patrol for almost 18 years, just shy of 18 years. So a large part of my career I've spent uh, doing operate what we call sign cutting operations. Um, and even if you're not doing sign cutting details within the Border Patrol, you do a lot of tracking. So a lot of that involves uh, identifying sign, uh, tracking, following that sign, uh, sometimes over, over miles of ranch lands from one ranch to another, uh, through brush, rocks, dirt, um, and being able to identify the type of sign by uh, the type of footprint, size, shape, um, the pattern that's within the footprint, and also the age of the footprint as well, based on how <coughs> wind blown it is and how warm that footprint looks. Mr. Can, can you, can you, can you do this? I'll tell you this. Long Step long back. When you're going to be, if you're not going to be testifying, I mean, uh, looking at the doc, at the, at the big poster board. Step over here, sir. And then speak that way. Okay. That way, the court reporter is right here. So, talking about. <laughs> so, so, so yeah, I spent a lot of my, my career uh, looking at tracks in the dirt um, and being able to follow them, identify them, age them. Um, things of that nature, uh, and and it doesn't. It's not also always tracks in the dirt. Like I mentioned, grass trails. Um, if a person walks through uh, grass, especially of any height, uh, you're going to lay down, knock down some of that grass. You're going to leave an indication that you passed through there. Um, you can also usually identify a humans from an animal most of the time as well. But here you do see some some grass that is matted down. You say yes, sir. Okay. Um, so. Further up the trail, uh, around this area here, uh, there was a large area, uh, four or five feet in diameter, that was laid down, matted down. Uh, that would indicate somebody was there for either for an extensive period of time, or they, uh, you know, either pacing around, or they knelt down, uh, or laid down, or squatted down there to make themselves smaller. Um, so at that moment, my my first thought when I saw that was possibly whoever attacked her was laid here uh, or waiting here in ambush for. The individual for the for the deceased lady. Let me ask you a question. Interesting. Yes. So that would Agent would be where he was waiting. Walk by that same area. Yes, he did. Yes, when I when I observed him walking, uh, so I was here by the trucks. The the lady's body was more or less here. Uh, I observed him walking all the way up past here, uh, all the way up this area out of my sight, and then back again. Uh, like I said at least two uh, to three times, and then he walked back. So he had, he had walked past that area a couple of times. Yes. And would any uh, trained Fort Troy agent have noticed that matted grass? Yes, sir. I would expect so. As close to the as close to the road as it was, uh, yeah, it was very easily to see, easy to see, very visible. Uh, any anybody who spent any time uh, in the Fort Troy should be able to pick that out for you. And this supervisor didn't indicate anything about that clue. No, sir. Okay. 
So what do you do after you see that grass? So once I saw that grass, like I said, I, I looked at it, I thought, well, maybe this, somebody stayed here uh, trying to ambush this individual. Uh, so I kind of kept looking at, at the edges of it. I noticed a grass trail uh, in the grass that was matted down, uh, leaving that grassy area, going more towards, towards the river into the brush right here, uh, kind of curved over this direction. As I let my eyes follow that grass trail, I uh, first picked up uh, the color of some clothing there, and I noticed they were bloody, uh, and then and I could tell that it was a child. What do you do? So I called out to the other uh, officers and agents that were there. Uh, I didn't really have vision, visual contact with them anymore because of the, the slight curve in the road and the uh, because I was off the road into the brush. Okay. If I was on the road, I would have been able to see them, but I was off the road in, into so, the grass there. So you're not. So I let them You're know. not visible to anybody at this time. Uh, you. Not, not that I'm aware of. Okay. So how do you? So, so I, I just vocalized to them uh, verbally. What do you say? I said, hey, I, I found another body over here. And I said, I, I'm pretty sure it's a child. Um, and then I heard some people vocalize back to me, you know, oh, shit, no, man, no. So uh, some grunts and groans, people obviously uh, reacting to that. Mm -hmm. um, and then they, they just told me, okay, uh, we're coming towards you. We're going to come to you. And what do you do? You're so observant. So at that point, I went ahead and stepped uh, closer to the child. Um, uh, obviously, first uh, priority there was to see if there was any signs of life from the child, if there's anything we can do to, to help the child. Uh, as I approached, uh, I didn't make contact physically with the child. I approached it within about four or five feet. Um, I was able to uh, observe the child there. Um, he was laying face up. Um, his head was turned to the right. He had quite a bit of blood on his, uh, his shirt, um, some on his pants. Uh, there was a large, uh, I wouldn't say large, it was, a, it was a cut here, a visible cut on the on the side of his neck, uh, right where your his carotid artery would, artery would be. Uh, there was a, a pool of blood uh, on the grass uh, from that. You can see blood uh, that was coagulated already on, on his neck there. Um, his mouth was uh, partially open. Uh, his eyes were, were open about halfway. Uh, I watched his chest uh, to see if I could see any signs of breathing or anything like that. I saw no signs of respiration at all whatsoever. And then there was, there was some flies also beginning to, to That's terrible. gather on him. So as another officer uh, approached me, uh, got to my location, uh, he asked me, hey, did, did you touch the child at all? I said, no, I have not. Described to him what I observed. He observed the same thing. Uh, at that point, somebody had already had also asked, hey, do you need EMTs back? Uh, and I told him, no, I'm pretty sure we're past that point. Uh, and once. Also with the knowledge that they told me that the, the female had been deceased for two hours as well. Uh, so the other officer showed up there, he agreed with the assessment, so now I'm pretty sure the child's been deceased for, for an amount of time beyond our help there. What do you do after you uh, see the child? Uh, what else do you do? So from here where the child was, I went ahead and uh, me and that same that officer that uh, showed up there, we moved back closer to the road. Um, <clears throat> Uh, I believe some other officers and, and detectives were also coming towards us at that time. So as I, I was standing inside the grass here and I, I looked across the road this direction, I was able to see sticking up out of the grass um, uh, a wheel sticking up there and part of uh, uh, just some, some cloths, the bar sticking up. Uh, and it, it caught my attention right away as, as I looked across the road uh, because it was very, very clean, uh, looked new, it didn't look sunburnt, sun faded, uh, it was plastic and rubber. So usually when those things are outside the elements, uh, obviously they they become uh, eroded by the sun, the color will fade on, they turn whitish, grayish. Uh, this didn't look like that at all, it looked, it looked very clean and new. Can you show us where you saw that, more or less? So he threw the stroller as well, which we know, so they showed so that as well. So the child was more or less uh, in this area, and it was, it was across the road here uh, in the grass. <coughs> what, was, what was it? Uh, so that, that was the stroller. Um, so as I as I looked at it across there, uh, I called out to uh, the other agents that were there because we had been discussing already uh, those lines that I mentioned earlier in the road uh, that stood out, um, and we we hadn't really figured out what they were yet. We had talked about them maybe some kind of cart or wagon. Uh, so I called out to the agents and said, "Hey, I, I think I found uh, the cart over here," and. Uh, I said, I think it's a stroller. So I called out to them, and then when I said that, I heard uh, Supervisor Burgos 
uh, from the area where he was at. He was over with all the other agents near the trucks. I heard him respond. He said, oh, yeah, I, I saw that, uh, but I just thought it was some kind of something garbage, just some trash thrown there. Uh, yeah, Pernil, we already saw a picture of it, but will we see the stroller today? Maybe, probably. Agent, uh, I have some here, Danny. Danny, I'm good. Danny, I got him. I got him. Okay. Did you find anything else while you were out there? Uh, yes, sir. So, as I after I saw that, that stroller, uh, I crossed the road uh, in a manner best I could to not disturb anything on the road, uh, proceeded to it, was able to observe uh, the back side of that stroller facing away from me. Uh, I was able to see uh, some potato, looks like some, some uh, Doritos chips, a pack of wipes uh, that was kind of laying and falling off the back of it. Okay. Uh, it was laying on okay. its side, uh, like I said, with the, the part where the child would sit facing away from me. So as I was looking at it, I asked for another officer, a police officer that had shown up uh, to, to approach from the opposite side. He approached from the opposite side and, and he confirmed to me that there was no, uh, no child in there. I asked him if there was any, child, any other child visible in the stroller uh, to make sure that obviously we don't have uh, somebody else there. Uh, he said no, that it was empty. So I, uh, I didn't see any other kind of disturbance on that side of the, of the, the road. Uh, so I crossed the road back over and uh, I what, let did one you, what did you proceed to do when you crossed the road back over again towards the river? So af after I crossed the road back over towards the river, I went ahead and proceeded uh, further down river, uh, also staying in the grass off the road, so I didn't disturb any kind of foot sign or footprints or evidence that was there. Um, looking for any indication, as I said earlier, that someone had approached the road from, from that side to the river side uh, of the road. Uh, I was able to see a, a very, very slight faint uh, grass trail uh, going away, looked like away from uh, the road towards the river. Uh, it looked more like an animal trail to me than a, than a human trail. It looked, it looked very faint, very thin, uh, which is one of the ways we kind of identify uh, human versus animal grass trails. Uh, but I decided to investigate it anyway. So I, as I, I walked down through that, that little uh, thin grass trail towards the river, uh, maybe 20 yards or so, I uh, got to a, a drop-off area where it dropped down towards the river. Uh, right before that, I, I saw a shoe uh, laying there in, in, the, uh, in the grass. Uh, it was a white shoe, cloth, uh, and as I looked at it, to me it looked uh, like it matched or was very similar to the shoe that I had seen uh, near the feet of the, of the female victim. Uh, so I Call out again. called out again. Uh, I asked over there, I said, hey, can you get described to me the shoe that she's wearing? Is there any kind of markings on it? Any kind of brand, anything like that? The shoe that, that's near her body. Um, they said they didn't see any kind of markings or brand or anything on it at the time. Uh, I was able to see on the inside of the shoe, uh, on the, the insole, because uh, the shoe was face up, the one I could see, uh, it said memory foam on it. I said, okay, I took that away. Uh, they just told me, hey, there's another officer coming over there. He marked it with some, uh, with some some yellow tape uh, and then I proceeded back towards the road uh, looked on the road itself we proceeded a little bit further uh, down river uh, just looking for any kind of uh, sign on the road any kind of uh, footprints that were there that I might be able to identify uh, the only visible fresh footprints that I could see there uh, were consistent with uh, the boots that agent Bugos was wearing so at the time I said okay well agent Bugos walked down here this these are his boot prints. I don't see anything else. So I went ahead and moved back towards the trucks uh, through the grass and way back towards our, our vehicles there. As I went back towards the vehicles and passed the female's body again, uh, I stopped, uh, had a look at the shoe that she had there, and I could see uh, inside of that shoe, on the inside, it, it also said memory foam, and it, it looked like an exact match for that other shoe that was over there mm -hmm. uh, in the grass. I'm just showing you guys. Going to show you 124. 
is an area along the that trail, right? Um, and did you, had you happen to notice blood splatters all along that trail? Or let me ask you this specifically: Was there blood trail from where those stroller marks had stopped back to the body of the victim? So at at the time that I was there, my, my focus was more on what's in the grass coming from the riverbank or going to the riverbank, uh, more so than what was actually on the road because I knew uh, Agent Burgos had already walked up that road, uh, so I wasn't really looking too hard at checking it. So I, I didn't really observe the trail between the, the stroller marks and the body. So okay, no problem. With not, not, not in detail because yes, that wasn't what I was looking for. I'm going to also publish... Uh, some photos of the child. Uh oh. So these are our graphic photos. Okay, for trigger warning for the audio then. I'm sure they're not gonna show us. So you one twenty five. Can you see what tell the jury what we see here? Uh yes sir, that that would be consistent with the view that I saw from uh the area where I saw the the matted down grass near the road, uh looking towards in into the brush area. Uh, when I first noticed the child, uh, that would be pretty much the, the view that I had there, or some something similar to that. I'll show you 126. How does he? Yes, sir. That would be Such as a weird closer way to approach to the child there. 127. Yeah, you better look, bro. Yes, sir. That would be consistent with what I, I saw that day. Is he trying to look upset? We see here. So here would be the view looking back across the road uh, towards where the, the stroller is there. Uh, as I mentioned, you can see the wheels sticking up, part of the, the cloth material. And 129. Yes, or same, same stroller. Yes, Johnny Dennison was really working the scene. He sounds like a detective. Yes, sir. That would be the view from so the, the back of it where I could see into it. Yes, Paula says, interesting how he realizes that Agent Burgos was there and doesn't question initially since he was exploring and since he yes, was sir. his supervisor as well, right? He'd probably like, what? The condition, this is what you had described, it looked like a, something new that, that yes. Not, yes, sir. had not been burnt by the sun. Yeah, especially the cloth parts that you can see are, are not faded by the sun at all, the, the black plastic on it. Um, you also said that you had seen uh, some white piece. Correct, sir. Yes, the white piece are laying on the ground right here. The Doritos are, are right there. Shame. Okay. And that's one, 135. I'm going to show you to 248, uh, this picture of the shoe. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir, that's the, that's the white shoe that I found in the grass. Okay, 251. Yes, sir, same shoe. Okay. I'm going to show you a... 250. Yes, sir. Same shoe. And yeah, he was the there shoe contaminating the, the crime shoe scene. That was near the victim. Yes, sir. Correct. Okay. <laughs> Elaine, yes. <laughs> oh, boy. Gigi Golfer Girl, thank you for spoiling the mods. I'm going to show you uh, 149. This is an aerial view. You recognize this area? Yes, sir. Um, you want me to point out anything specific, or no? Well, these okay. these particular vehicles. Yes, sir. The bottom vehicle in the picture there would have been Mr. Burgos's truck. The one above that, behind it, would have been my truck. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. okay. These witnesses have been so good so far. How do you believe, uh, do you have an opinion how that shoe ended up in that location? Uh, to me, it looked like it was probably tossed over there because there wasn't, like I said, a, a clear grass trail going to it that looked like a human grass trail. Uh, like I said, there was just a, a hint of a, an animal grass trail starting towards it. And then after that, there wasn't really anything until I just, I got to that area and looked around and found that shoe. So to me, it, it appeared like somebody tossed or threw it over that direction. Same thing with the stroller. Uh, when I looked at, when I crossed the road from where the, the child's buddy was towards the stroller, 
uh, I was able to observe the, the tracks of the stroller there, the lines, and they, they went forward and then they turned sideways and then they just disappeared. It didn't look like it was rolled into the grass. It looked like it was <coughs> probably picked up and tossed into the grass. And there was no grass trail going from the road to the stroller. It was just there. Uh, let me follow up on that. So th from the tracks that you saw, the, the stroller tracks had a stopping point. Correct. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes. And you said the, the stopping point of that stroller, vote, stroller yes. had it moving either left or right, but no longer proceeding south. Correct, sir. Yes. And around that stroller, you've identified that there was um, either some of the rocky boot tracks that Boogles was wearing when you got there. Yes, correct? sir. Yes. And you also identified from one of the exhibits that you saw in which in your experiences a tennis shoe mark around the stroller marks. Correct. Yes, sir. After you have found baby, the baby, and you've already discovered the stroller, and you've also found the shoe that matches the victim's shoe on the trail, what, if any, type of contact do you have with Agent Burgos at this time? So after I went back to our, our vehicles, uh, I, I should say on the way back, uh, I was asked by one of the detectives there uh, to write a, a written statement, a uh, synopsis of just what I had uh, seen and observed that day. So uh, when I got back there, uh, all the other agents, Border Patrol agents that were on scene, uh, they had a, a paper statement that they were, they were filling out and, and writing. Uh, they were actually all over my truck, pretty much using it as a table, uh, the top of the truck, side of the truck, because there's not a lot to write on out there. Um, so as I approached them, uh, I Been noticed uh, years, that Dine. Agent Burgos had uh, two copies uh, of the form. Because um, I asked, hey, does anybody have an extra copy? They said, yeah, Burgos has an extra. I noticed he had two. Uh, and he said, no, no, we ran out. Go get, go get one from one of the officers. I said, okay. So I went back to one of the, the uniformed PD officers that was there. I said, hey, they, they asked me to do, the detective asked me to do a written statement. Do you have any more? He doesn't want to give him uh, one. That officer said, no, we, we gave him enough for, for all of you guys. One of you guys should have one. Uh, have an extra. So I went back. I said, hey, I went back to Agent Burgos. I said, hey, they said they gave you guys an extra for me to, to be able to, to have one. And he said, oh, no, I, I started one, and then uh, it was just a rough draft. I, I messed it up. It's a rough draft, so I, I used the other one, the extra one. Oh, I said, okay. Word. So I went back to the PD officer. I said, hey, they, they told me that he told me he messed one up, so he had to use the extra one, so now I need one. Okay, wait a few minutes, and, and we'll go up up, uh, up to my vehicle and get another one. So and did you eventually uh, fill out a, a voluntary statement of... Uh, I can't what believe you tried to stop him from writing statements. Yes, sir, I did. I proceeded up, up to the end of Bristol uh, with one of the uniformed officers. Um, he gave me another statement. I sat in the front of his vehicle, and I, and I filled that out. And it, that would be, I guess, a, 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 a summary, not, probably not Matt? matching every word for word you said here today, but a summary. Right, of what right. It's a, it's a, you don't have a, a ton of room to write on them. It's just like a page and a half or, or maybe a page uh, that's handwritten. So it's, yeah, it's just a quick synopsis summary of... These are, these are some of the things I observed when I arrived on the scene. Let me ask you, uh, in your, at that time, 17 years of experience, have you ever seen uh, a crime scene like that? Um, a murder scene? No, this is the first murder scene that I've responded to. I've seen other dead bodies uh, that I've responded to in the brush, uh, but those have all been uh, usually related to heat, heat stress, dehydration, exposure to the elements. Sure. Um, Trains, uh, contact with the train, things you of that nature. Murder scene. What makes you say that? Your impressions as you're, as you're one of the first ones to arrive. Um, the, the amount of blood that's there. Um, mm -hmm. Mostly the amount of blood, the splatter. Um, the mul looked like multiple wounds. Uh, like I said, there was a full separate one on on near one of her hips, and then all all the blood around her head, neck area. Uh, to me, it looked like a violent crime. It didn't look like anything else I would describe. Mm -hmm. At any time that you were there, did Agent Burgos inform you that he had found or had in his possession the cell phones of either of the victims? No, sir. Not at all. Mm -hmm. Forgot that in his truck, At any time I? that you were there with your supervisor, Agent Burgos, did he ever at any time inform you that he knew who the victim's identity 
was? No, sir. Not at all. Did he, did he at any time make any statements as to what he thought had happened there in your presence, yes or no? No, not, not in my presence. He never, right. never mentioned that he knew her at all or recognized her or anything. Thank you. Look at him, look at him. He's have you come back after lunch uh, for further examination uh, from perhaps both counsel? Uh, but for now, we're going to go ahead and uh, cut off for lunch. <laughs> we're going to try and do an hour and 15, and hour, hopefully be able to get an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, so it's 12.35, I believe. So let's see if we can get everyone get in, get in here by... Um, Get started about 145 or 150, the latest, okay? Right, so we mean Thank two. you. <laughs> Remember that you're still in the instructions that I gave you, especially with regard to communicating with you among yourselves or anyone else with regard to what you've heard here okay. for the last couple of days. Thank you. I don't believe right, you. Right I still don't believe him. <laughs> it's like around then, about an hour 15. Yeah, we'll see you in two hours, sir. <laughs> no shade to the judge, but we know how his timing works now. Because he said, hopefully you'll get an hour 15 or so, right? Sure. That was, that was incredible testimony. Wow. From, if you missed it, in case, you, I'm just going to show you one more time. If you ever ask who's on the stand there, it's really written right there. With Bradley Dennison, Border Patrol agent, he was on the stand. And man, the witnesses they had yesterday, Angelica Hernandez, uh, Griselda's sister, the, the doctor was on the stand as well. He looked a little less, enth less enthused yesterday. And then the medical examiner, Dr. Stern, that was yesterday. So if you missed that, go check it out now in our break if you want to. Or go check out some of the Coburger stuff from yesterday because you're going to want to see that before the hearing today. Why? Because it'll prepare you for everything. We're going to take a lunch break and then we'll be back for the afternoon session. I just want to set up the time correctly there. Uh, Becky G says, if you played guilty, I wonder if you'd automatically get death or would there be a death penalty portion of the trial by jury? Anyone know? That I don't know. If anyone knows, let me know. Um, but that's interesting. I don't think he's going to do that, though, right? For a little bit there, I'm like, maybe he would. But then I thought, you know what? This guy, even though he's attorneys, he's, he's tried to fire an attorney three times and eventually succeeded. That attorney's name was Wade. I've got it written down here somewhere. Stan oh, we're flapping pages now. Hold on. Silverio Martinez. So they didn't say the reason, but then he got Eduardo Pena. And William Boggs. So, I think William Boggs. We could guess it's the guy with the glasses, right, that stands in front of the camera. Mr. Boggs, could you please just step aside? <laughs> you are blocking the camera. We can't, we cannot see the map time. So, anyway, point is, um, thinking of how long it's taken to get to trial, that this defendant has been so patient and not just being like okay you know what no no i'm just going i'm just going to not put the family through this or anyone no no he's waiting he's waiting for this trial death penalty trial damn shelly thank you so much i really appreciate it okay so let me just let me just quickly how about i quickly set up that live stream so <laughs> i don't believe them day uh, day 2 afternoon session will be happening let's quickly set up the time so he said around <laughs> about the 45 right now it's 7 37 p.m in the in the netherlands so like 8 45 p.m i would say is when it's happening and i'm going to set it at that time and then i think we'll still be late beyond that i still think we'll have 15 minutes to just brief okay so footsie girl footsie's girl says gee i worked with active reserve military on orders once happened to be oh border patrol in arizona okay these guys are trained in crime scene management due to the very nature of their profession. They see the unalive. Oh, thank you so much. And you say HG to you. So is that hug to you? Thank you very much, uh, Footsie's girl. It makes sense. I just mean, we're just all kind of just rooting for him, <laughs> for the Sporter Patrol agent. He, he was so observant. It was so brilliant. And uh, uh, if he's not a supervisor yet, he absolutely should be. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Mary Poppins style. Next, he gets the promotion. Exactly. Okay. So, A. Heinemann, one case at a time if we can. I know I mentioned Koberger, but that's because it's like happening today. We're waiting for that hearing as well. Shelly, 
Welcome to membership. Welcome to all the new members and all the new subscribers. If you haven't yet subscribed and you're just lurking and you're not sure, just remember subscribing is absolutely free. It doesn't cost you anything. You just subscribe, hit the bell, and then you'll know, ah, she's live again. Do I want to watch this? Yes or no? The answer is always yes. <laughs> no, you, you decide. So, yes. Uh, Heather says, you are allowed to review previous testimony to refresh memory also. What are we talking about? Oh, yes, I know. Johnny didn't claim that he knew her. He's done. And then he forgot. Because remember yesterday, I forgot about that until I think it was Sam reminded me earlier. That he was like, telefono when he realized, oh man, because he put the victim's cell phone. And the baby also had Dominique's uh, phone to like play games on or whatever. I think there were two phones that he put in his vest. And then the, that was in his truck. And he realized, oh crap, like the, their phones are in my truck. So yeah, within one hour. From zero to within one hour, he was arrested. Yes. Hello, Dar. I am South African. If you are brand new here, I'm South African, living in Holland, which in the Netherlands. I'm living in the Netherlands, which is Europe. Yes. Uh, so thank you so much for being here. Yeah, the bag lady says always subscribe, so you can stay in the know. I mean, why wouldn't you want to know? Why wouldn't you want to know? And it's not like those annoying spammy newsletters that you subscribe to. You know, YouTube should come up with a new word for subscribe because it reminds us of those newsletters and then they email you a hundred times a day. No, 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 no. Don't worry. You only get three notifications per 24 hours on YouTube. <laughs> so you won't get spammed. Uh, but I do a lot on this channel, so you don't want to miss out. All right. So anyway, this witness was so good. There's actually so much to go over. I'm going to I'm gonna look at it over my notes and we'll come back. We can rather go over it then. Or if you want to go back in this stream and watch a little bit, do that. Do that. Let me quickly make sure that I'll send the link, okay, for the stream, number one. Um, let's find it for you. This is where the next stream is happening. Wait. Day two, afternoon session. Here it is. I put it there for you. I'm about to make it public so that you can find it really easily. And I'm going to make sure that this stream leads to that one, okay? This guy was just, <laughs> I don't know how he thought. He thought he was so smart ambushing them like that. Wait, we want this stream to lead to that stream. Yeah, it should. Okay. It should. <laughs> Rhino says, this is actually a YouTube group that started as Americans wanting to learn South Africa and <laughs> taught by someone in the Netherlands. Yeah. That's the theory. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rabbit. You say this is the only true crime channel I watch. So I'll be monitoring when they come back. They said they'll be back in an hour 15. So just think about it. They've just walked out now. So we'll be back here in about an hour or so. And then we'll continue on with day two afternoon session. If you didn't know, and you're only tuning in now, this trial is set to last for three to four weeks. I wonder, you know, they said the prosecution would take a week to a week and a half. I don't know if the defense is going to take another week and a half. To me, it feels like this trial could be wrapped up by next week, Friday, but let's see. Maybe it is three weeks. I'm just thinking, is the jury going to come back next week, Friday, hmm? already with a verdict? Hmm? I don't know. If, it doesn't feel like this is a, a very challenging one. However, it's a death penalty case, so they have to consider very carefully. Yes, uh, be kind to take a bow rest to yourself. Well, I'm probably going to talk Mr. Grisby's head off now. Update him. <laughs> this is what's happening in this case. No, I'm going to rest for a second, and then I'll be back. Um, thank you so much for being here. And did you get the link to the stream? One more time. I don't want you guys to miss it. If you're on Patreon as well, you get the link. Here it is, okay? Go to this stream next if it doesn't lead you there. Here's the link. I'm putting it in chat. Okay, then I'll see you there. Bye! <laughs>